We build on topics, whether conscious or cosmic. It's never nonsense. Mega levels are microscopic. It's a killer priest project. AD control the rocket. Before we land a plane, many things we engage and explain. The unexplained without mass. Welcome to the Killer Priest Podcast. Podcast. Yeah, yeah, we are we are back in the building. Oh man, y'all see what I'm wearing today? Cause you know who's coming through. You know what I'm saying? Uh, man, I'm very excited for the day. The day is gonna be a very very special day. Um, though I just heard that he can't be as with us that long. Uh, uh, I'll let y'all build up for for I start talking. Though I heard he can't be with us that long. We have the young Pharaoh coming in. Um, as we build up, and I would like to say first and all, welcome to the Killer Priest Podcast. If you are new to this channel, we welcome you with open hands. I am your host, Killer Priest, the Iron Sheik from the Middle East. I'm almost there, so prepare. I say peace and rocking the rocket, none other than AD8 Dizzle. Peace. What's good? Welcome back. Let's go. And on my side is nothing but Coach Solomon in the building. Peace. What's good, y'all? Chilling? Co-host. And we have her right here. She's not in the background. She's in the forefront. Come on. <laughs> Give it up to Naposha Disnar. Uh, peace. To the, the darkest light. minds of the light. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep, yep. All right. Come in and clear. Peace to the family. Oh, we have the brown buffalo. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, we have the Brown Buffalo, uh, Danny Salinas in the building. Shout out to our uh, moderators, which we call here oracles. Seeing the uh, oracles, we call them architects. If you've seen the movie Matrix, you see that they control the science on what's said to the mind. Shout out to Sophia Stewart, the real Matrix. Um, yes. Yeah, exactly. A lot of people in these. Uh, you see what I'm wearing today? I, I, I put on this garb. That's for the brother. Mm -hmm. And um, let me see. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, shout out to Voltage. I see Aurora Borealis. He says, hey, yo, peace. What's up to you? Yo. Um, uh, let me see. Let me see. Going through L. Bar shit. Yep. I, always, I always think of that as my boy. Um, oh, my bag. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> We have an ill, a dope super cat. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to yeah, Mojito. Mojito. And we have not named Mojito has a kid, and he knows when the show comes on. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Shout out to Mojito. Yeah. Shout Man. out to Mojito. He's the mascot. Yo, yo, he's the mascot. The, <laughs> the my, he's us. Uh, what segment? What is it? Segment. Segment is the is the cat, but that's a female cat. Oh, okay. okay. You gotta give him like a, a shirt. <laughs> yeah, we do, right? Give a shirt. We do. We do. Word. We do, man. Word. Um, hybrid cipher says beautiful knowledge. Thank you. We if you are new to the show, we are into um uplifting our minds and taking us to different levels of thinking and consciousness and up building the spirit and the soul within to be um living in the now. And don't be a scared to to do what you what you your purpose what you are here to put we are here to push you forth to because you know we have a lot of narcissistic uh, CPT there's a lot of damage that's been going on trauma lifetime trauma and we're here to assist and help with that though we are no uh, no um, MDs but we just assist with um, building and. Um, it's true love. And that's what it, you know, love heals. Love heals. Mm -hmm. We gotta look at that, man. Yeah, I like to see things like that. <laughs> love heals. Mm -hmm. Why do they always do that when they, and they shake their head like, love heals, it heals, it does. Yeah. I get my Denzel Washington, it does, it heals. It <laughs> me. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> shout out, y'all. Nah, shout out to Denzel. So many people imitated him, man. It's hard to do Denzel now. Uh, you um, noticed that so many people, because it was so hard to get Denzel down pat because of, you know, some people are just hard to imitate. You know what I'm saying? Some people, but they got Denzel down pat. I love imitations, man. I love impressions. I love uh, people that can do impressions, man. Um, <laughs> 
We even have uh, uh, brothers and sisters on the craft that is very good. <laughs> <laughs> Impression, impress, impressions, man. <laughs> yes, yes. There you go. Oh, I think we're about to show some of them. Denzel, yeah, Jamie Foxx get into it. I like, oh, oh. yeah. Fair. I like the thing about I like uh, about impressions when the person gets so deep, I forget who I'm looking at. You know what I mean? Right, right. Mm. I feel that feeling. So it's like an actor. It's like a trans, right? Yeah, it's like a trans. They go into a whole new character. Yeah. What you feel about that, Nepal? Okay. And Alton, the prophet. He said the podcast is undefeated. Thank you, my brother. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Uh, yeah, man, keep it coming in. Uh, Sorry, I had to go turn off the machine. It was making too much background. Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. Can you see me now? Uh-oh. Yeah. Yep. I love impressions, man. I think AD's about to show one. Um, and pre- I, I just was infatuated. Faction, wait, oh, yeah? since I was young, yeah. And, yeah, and yo, you blame yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you get your fucking hands <laughs> off me. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> See that head? <laughs> oh, that was dope. That was like training day, right? Was, no. <laughs> yo, yo, it's the head. It's, 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 it's little things that I watch. You know what right. I'm saying? I, I really love impersonations, man. You have any impersonations you know how to do? You know, like, no, well, I have impersonations. Man. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You got to know. But no, they don't, but everybody doesn't know who I'm going to impersonate, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll start that later, man. Shout out to uh, Knowledge Born when he because comes through. Because I literally. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Never mind. No, nah, you're fine. You're fine. Nah, I'm I'm only best with impersonating people I actually know. <laughs> so I can't I, I understand how you how you is, you know? Yeah. I mean, right. I can only impersonate like family members and like friends. That's all I can really do. Yeah, we all got homies that we could impersonate. Oh, it's easy. <laughs> it's definitely oh, easy. Oh man. It's definitely yeah. easy. Especially when they like they're so they have like a unique voice, a unique right. unique mannerism. You know what I mean, this is something like that, so you know I'm not I ain't, I am professional though, not like Jamie. <laughs> no, so. Oh, Jamie is a is like a god of. He's so good. He became Denzel in that clip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I think he's about to show one more. Uh, this 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 one, this one was the first impression of Denzel that I ever seen, and I loved it so much. And I, I love that AD found that. I, I saw this years ago. This uh, forgot his name, comedian, but this is good. Check this out. Hard getting a girl go to the prom. Had to figure out who I was gonna ask three months in advance. Hope she didn't change her mind. <laughs> Somebody like Denzel. Denzel probably asked a girl to the prom the day of the prom. <laughs> After school, just to make it challenging. <laughs> he just leaned on his locker watching girls walk. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hey, 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 Tina, come here, come here, come here, come here, you here now. Yo, come here. Yeah, you, you. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, he probably was the best. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Now, now, you, you, you know I've been watching you, huh? Yeah, you don't know, no, and you've been watching me too. I'm not sure how you feel. I want to know if you, I'm going to put this out there. I want to know if you might want to accompany. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yo, Me no. to, uh, to, to the prom. What's that comedian name? I used yeah, to know yeah, his name. Three hours, yeah. That's, that's not Godfrey. Yeah. Uh, no. You like that. You like yeah. that. Good, good, mm. good, good. Hey, one more thing. Hey, don't walk away. Uh, I need you to pick me up. I don't have a car, okay? Yo. Nah, he destroyed that. That was good. Oh, my man. God. That was yeah. good. Yeah. Dean Edwards. That. Who is it? Dean Edwards. Mm. No, I don't think that's his name. That's what it says. Yeah, that's not Godfrey. No, nah, no, nah, that's not Godfrey. No. I used to watch this guy all the time just do Denzel's. That's all. He was the best. It was, okay. uh, so it was Dion Edwards. Dean Edwards? D- Dean Edwards. Yeah, put him in. 
Yeah. Yeah, he's good. He's yeah, Dean Edwards. Yeah, yeah exactly. Edwards. That's him. That's him. Yeah, he's like one of the best. The first, because he was doing that a long time ago. There's another guy, too. Mr. Sam's. Mr. Sam was doing a little bit of what's his name. But impressions, I mean, they just make me feel good. I, I just think at the end of the I day, got you, I got you. you get to see somebody and, and how they appreciate the person and can just do it. I just love that, man. Mm, mm. <laughs> Yo, well, so Chris, Chris, let me explain something to you about that. Because really, it's all about the person. See, people don't understand who I'm doing, but Chris, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's an inside joke, you guys. He gets it. It's fine. <laughs> all right. I have to do that for you. Everybody's quiet, but we know some Hold switch up. up. Hold on, that was super. Oh, well, you know, you know. That too? was super okay. good. Yeah, 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 that was super. No, no, because you know why? Because I'm a teacher. I teach. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's all. Let me stop before I get in trouble. Yo, yeah, yeah. Oh, yo, that, no, that was that was that was spot on. We gotta we gotta get that. No, shout back. out to if you do an impersonation also, of somebody because you admire that person. Yeah, indeed. Oh, yeah, indeed. Um, it's not mocking. Let's let's uh let's get a uh, let's get a uh, let's get young Pharaoh. Up oh, in real there. quickly, let's do also um speedy recovery to Jamie Fox. I think he's was is still in the hospital, mm. fighting some illness. So. Oh yeah! yeah. Shout out to that brother. Shout, shout no, out definitely. To what? what happened uh, to Jamie Fox? Yeah, look that up. He had some kind of medical emergency, and he he had he was shooting on the set uh, on location for something he's doing and then he just got sick and he was admitted to the hospital but he he's doing better i guess mm -hmm. but he was in intensive care so just shout out to him and his family just for speedy recovery my he's in my prayers our prayers our thoughts mm -hmm. for wellness all right all right well it goes out to jamie fox let's um Amen. let's get to the zoom in the back and see if uh yeah farrell's back there uh, he's not. Oh, okay. It says an undisclosed medical con complication, but he's healing mm -hmm. right now. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yo, my, my, oh my God. Hold on. Yo, man, we, we, uh, that's crazy that we just, you see how everything's synchronized that, how we could just talk on things. We just talk about impersonations. Mm -hmm. And the first one you showed was Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Yeah. I do believe in synchronicity. Sometimes the spirit do be like pushing out and you just get, you get, you get vibes, yo, you get vibes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I understand we can go into the science of it, but some things just happen, you know, they, they've been doing it in, in tribal things and things just happen sometimes. Some people call it luck, wishing, but you know, it's intuition. Some things are beyond our comprehension. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, we label things because we don't understand it. That's why we label mm. we have to you know understand mm -hmm. the you know the unseen. If what if you could what if you could uh control your dreams to you see? Oh, that'd be deep. Mm. Like a TV. Yeah, control our dreams? Yeah. That would be crazy. Yeah, if you could control your dreams. I mean, I kinda think we do though. Kinda it depends on the type check. of dream, because there's different types of dreams. Yeah. If you become aware in the middle of the dream. I, sometimes that do happen though. If you're having a lucid dream and it, you can tell that you're having it right there on the spot. Right. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Okay. Okay. Without further ado, man, because this brother, I think he, I know he's be on the move. He got things he got to do, and um, it's it's an honor for this brother to come on to the podcast, man. I, I I love it so much, man. I appreciate it. Oh uh, man. We'll bring it to the podcraft right now for the first time. Uh, uh, and the first time, everyone give a warm welcome to Young Pharaoh. Make peace, some noise, peace. man. How y'all doing? What up, my brother? Another day, man. Another day in this world we live in. Right. <laughs> Word, man. Happy to have you here today, man. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Thank y'all. Thank you to whoever this beautiful young lady is in the background. You know, so, um, I am Napasha Dom. I'm very glad to meet you. I've been watching a lot of your work. Excited to talk to you. 
Thank you, baby. So as you know, it's number one is world renowned, and um, I'm excited <laughs> to talk to y'all as well. Thank y'all for having me. You know, we, you know, I'm ready to get started whenever y'all ready to get started. Yeah, man, let's Please. get started, bro. Uh, first of all, how's I mean, how you doing, man? How's your health and everything? I say this, you know, because some people try to call me Uncle Ruckus or Boondocks. <laughs> <laughs> And I say this, you know, as not only the leader of the black community, hence crown the title by the CIA, you know, for the astonishing and astounding work and, and, and research I've done even on the level and beyond levels of the CIA. I say this, what I'm getting ready to say in the most non-cool manner, but just in the just from my genuine experience. My health is as good as the community will allow it to be. It seems that the black community to this, you know, um, in this day and time is so has become so self-destructive that by the time you get traumatized by something on Monday, you can't even heal from it from Tuesday night because they didn't did some shit Tuesday morning. So on top of me healing from childhood traumas, on top of me healing from governmental traumas that has been inflicted upon me, not just from wrongful convictions, but excessive sent, you know, illegal sentencing and then the stresses of parole. And then on top of my baby mothers, you know, then when I thought that that was it, when I moved down here, I got into it, you know, unbeknownst to me, apparently the police had it out for me in Harris County for whatever reason. And then when I thought that that was over, if y'all can see, I got stitches on my head because three people tried to kill me like two nights ago with AK-47s. And then that didn't work. So they just snatched some of my jewelry. And, you know, I'm in the process of getting it back now. I've given, um... I've given Harris County everything they need. I've given the apartment complex, you know, what they need to get the footage over. I've even given them this this particular person's YouTube channel who bragged about it. And they, this is no disrespect to Harris County, but all I'm saying is I've pretty much done the damn investigation. All y'all got to do is kick a door. Because if I go kick a door and shoot his ass, which I have no problem doing, y'all going to try to charge me with home invasion and murder. But then I could pay 800000 something dollars in taxes and be told, that somebody would get back to me a week later. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, shit, if that's the damn case, fuck them goddamn taxes and fuck all <laughs> that. At least I was shooting motherfuckers my goddamn, because I ain't got a problem with it. But long story short, that's where my help is at right now, you know? That's where wow. my help is at. Yeah, that's man. Stuff. That's crazy. I'm go yeah, I know back, man, you was always going through it. You was like... Uh, respect to you, man. I know you, 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 you grown up and everything. But when you was coming in, like you was like a young lion, just coming in there, dropping all the knowledge and stuff like that. And um, I used to watch you, man. And I, I used to, I was like, yo, that young brother got some knowledge on him. But I know you increase now, um, and your conscious and your conscious uh, thinking, and you have elevated. You, you used to, uh, where are you today? With um, the, you used to teach the black woman is God. Okay, I want to say this. The black woman is God teaching, as I, as I have explained. Mm -hmm. My 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 um train of thought on it was due to genetic uh chronology via that black women were here first. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm not gonna sit here and say I originated that teaching. Mm -hmm. I would just say it's certain perspectives of it and certain understandings of the philosophy that I will fully back, one hundred percent. But what but but what I don't want people to do is think that that was ever my initial teaching because I didn't come out with that. That wasn't mm -hmm. something I came out with. I came out with the age of Aquarius and the Bible is based off astrology. And I came out talking about ancient Egypt being invaded by reptilian beings and astral projection and all that kind of shit. The black woman is God is just a teaching that you can't help come across if you study commit. We know this thing is to be a giant face of a black woman before they messed it up so you know when we're dealing with genetics you can't help but come to the understanding of women being here but you got to really accredit that teacher that teaching the dr ben and whether that teaching is uh you know depending on whose mouth is coming out of i would agree or disagree so i want to say that and I, I say that to say this you have a lot of people who are extremely manipulative and so it's just like some people, you know, they see you doing something and they copy it and start scamming. And next thing now, you know, you know what I'm saying? Now it's, it's kind of like saying conscious now. Nobody want to say it no more because people didn't ruin this shit. It's kind of like saying woke people didn't ruin this shit. Yeah, so when it comes to the, mm -hmm. 
Right, right. But when it comes to the black woman is God teaching, I have to say this every time I say it. I don't I can't account for why somebody else says it. Maybe they just trying to get some vagina. Maybe they just trying to make <laughs> I gotta be real. Maybe mm-hmm. they just trying to get some vagina and they, they realize you got low self-esteem. And if they tell you that, you will give you will open your leg. I can't explain for why another thing will come So I'm gonna just be honest. Or also I, um, you know, maybe some women uphold the teaching because they want to get away with toxic behavior. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, no matter what I do, as a, a godly deity, despite to what I do, because the black woman is God. You know what I'm saying? So I say that to say this. This is what I mean by the black woman is God. I've corrected. I've, I've, I've corrected any misunderstanding anybody will have. I'm going to do it again. I look at relationships to be modeled after anatomical structure. For example, you mm. know, I was building and I'm still looking to build a polygamous relationship, but just with women's, you know, preferably Africanoid and, and, and uh, Asian women or Blasian women, maybe some Hispanic, you know, but long story short, I'm looking to build a polygamous relationship, but it's based upon the actual fabric of the universe. When you look at an atom, the masculine energy is what holds the atom together. It's in the center, just like the solar system, the sun is in the center. Then you have these feminine based frequencies, aka electrons, because a negative charge is just a feminine charge. Negative and positive does not mean good or bad or or evil and righteous. Evil and evil and, and righteous mean evil and righteous. Negative and positive, according to actual science, just denotes masculine and feminine energy. Anything that has a negative charge is going to have a curvy wave signature. Anything that has a positive charge is going to have a more linear or right angled or 45 degree angled signature. So with that being said, when I say the black woman is God, I'm not talking about put your baby father in jail or abuse. I'm not talking about none of that stuff y'all do. When I say the black woman is God, I'm talking about the mitochondrial Eve gene was the and still is the original uh, prototype for all genomic structures. The XX chromosome was here first. Us as male black men, our XX chromosomes minus 2.8% of his own genetic mass. And uh, as far as the way women should be ve- women should be venerated, okay, it should be the same way the solar system has a relationship with a plant with the planets. It should be it's, it's the same way physical elements are created in the universe. Women do the exchanging and the interaction with one another. And men hold that hold that down, just like if you in a household, whether you're in a monotheistic relationship or a polytheistic polytheistic relationship, either way it go, we should all know, like no disrespect, unless you're in the house with a dyke or a tranny, we should all know that the man is the damn head of the household. So long story short, when I say the black woman is God, I mean it in it in, in the format that I'm putting it out correctly, in the format that I'm teaching it correctly. I have nothing to do with what's coming out of anybody's mouth. I don't want nothing to do with what's coming out of or what may come out of anybody's mouth in the future. I got to say this. That's how Nature Boy got famous. He heard me say it. He ran off. Next thing you know, this nigga had a coat on beat. And I don't want nothing. I don't want to be responsible for nobody hearing, hearing anything coming out of my mouth and then going outside and doing something diabolical or manipulating what comes out of my mouth. So I want to make it as clear as day when I explain what I mean by that. That's what I mean by that. Wow, thank you. And I, you know what? I absolutely 100% agree with what you're saying. I want you to, I want to ask you, can you talk to us about this, when you say the black woman, do you see a difference? And if you do, let us know between the westernized black woman and the black women who are not westernized. Yeah, I see good and bad in both. Like, let me say this before I just get on westernized black women. I'm going to say something that I learned about that I've seen in eastern black women, specifically African black women, like real. And I ain't saying women in the West, not Africanoid, but I'm talking about straight from like Ethiopia, Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And I'm speaking not just from me running into Nigerians now, but me dealing with Nigerians all my damn life. If you go to Buffalo, New York right now and go on the West side, you only going to see Hispanic people in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's the truth. That's yeah, true. So yeah. I'm, yeah. And I'm going to just tell you the truth. 
Western women are nice for fake. Mm -hmm. And it's like they'll be nice to you if they're trying to get some money out of you. But in reality, they're not really feminine. Mm. I feel like some African women they do be feminine, but they be mean as hell. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of weird. Like I don't really, you know, I I wouldn't be. I want to be honest about that. Like a lot of a lot of like even if you look at a lot of African parents, they be mean as hell to their goddamn kids. Why I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So Western Western women are more passive aggressive and manipulative with their tactics. And I feel like Eastern women is more cut folk with their goddamn tactics. Like, mm. I feel like a woman in the East would try to drag you through the courts and destroy you or, you know, slander your name. I feel like, I mean, a mm. woman from the West would try to destroy you through the court system. I feel like, a, you know, maybe a woman yeah, from the East, if they get mad, they might try to poison you. But long story short, that's the negatives. Now, as far as, far as the positives go, I feel like women in the West, they, their their understanding of contribution to a relationship <laughs> is something that means a lot to them, but maybe they don't understand that it doesn't mean a lot to us. Like, for example, I could be a millionaire and my best friend could work at B- McDonald's, but that would never get in the way of our relationship as long as ain't nobody jealous. Like, I could come to your apartment, nigga, as long as you got a chair and a TV, we could play the game. Hmm. But... Well, Western women, they don't, uh, when they contribute, I feel like they want to contribute to a man's life with with their career and with their financial status, mm. which is good, which is good. But then what they don't see is you're only attracting bums yep. because mm. in reality, I only want my woman contributing to me if it's a damn emergency. I only want my woman to step in. It's kind of like a fight. Like if I go out, I'm not looking to fight, but the only way I would want my woman to jump into a fight is if I was like knocked out and getting drugged into a damn van. You know what I mean? It would, to, it would have to be like, if you don't jump into this fight, you will probably never. Other than that, what man really wants his woman jumping into a fight? So I said to say right. this, Western women have been, even though they mean well, I feel like they have been tricked into contributing to a man in a way that we don't really care. Mm-hmm. And then certain women, you know, they don't really care about, I don't say, you know, they don't care about beauty because they got their own, they're more traditional. Like they don't really care about Gucci and Louis and Burberry, mm-hmm. but they'll sit around the house with you and 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 play the, the, the role that we would want the woman in the West to play, which is, a more traditional role and i feel like that's where the clash is because then you got women in the west talking about we going to the east for women looking for broke uneducated women when in reality them women ain't uneducated and then even if they may not have as enough i mean all of them because some of them do but all of them may not have the same salary as you but whether they broke or not we don't care so my thing is it's a huge psychological disconnect between eastern and western women that they need to acknowledge because we can only acknowledge it for so much before we start slapping people. And then if that happened, they're going to say we woman beaters. So I feel like <laughs> women need to clean their own shit up because if not, I'm going to be honest with you. Somebody like me will quickly go date out my race, even though I do, outside my race, even though I will openly tell y'all I would love and prefer to have black women as my wives. But if me not going to family court and criminal court mean I got to date a Spanish woman or a white woman, you best believe I'll be married to one. So my thing mm-hmm. is, Eastern and Western women, they got the same uh, peripheral issue psychologically that Eastern and Western men have. It's just like how they show that picture. You, you know how they try to always show Africa is poor? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Now take that understanding and apply that to the femininity you know, status of Eastern and Western women. They want to always show one as a boss chick or, 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 or <laughs> yeah. they always want to show another one. Yeah. A bomb one. one. <laughs> miles to a lake with a pot on her head. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like some kind of, I don't know who got to do it because I'm not in the woman's camp, but whoever y'all, <laughs> whoever the hell the lead black woman is, that Eastern and Western women, both hemispheres trust the most, y'all got to figure that shit out because I see the good in y'all and I see the bad in y'all. You know, I see the good qualities from both, whether we was whether we want to argue proper education or miseducation, just like I see the good qualities of having street smarts 
And then the downside to only having street smarts, and I see the good quality of being a school dude, and then the downsides of being naive to the streets when you in there. So I see the, the positive and negative in both. But what I do want to say here is I believe women need to figure that shit out quick, fast, in a hurry, because whether you're doing it intentionally or not, it doesn't matter you're doing it. And you're accidentally running off, you know, good men. And then, you know, y'all getting mad when we go other places. But at the mm-hmm. end of the day, I just want to say this. I don't, I would like for my woman to have money because why not? Just like a woman would like for her man to have money. But I think what a woman need to understand is y'all are seeking for us for protection and provision. And we seeking for y'all, we seeking y'all out for nourishment and a peace of mind. And if I can't get no peace of mind from no Western or no Eastern woman, you know what I'm saying? I just be single and just running streets and, and whatever, it, whatever it'd be. So I want to put that out there. Oh, wow. you, killed, God. you killed Get that. This, man. I ain't gonna lie, brother. Get this. <laughs> you killed that. Oh, man. Brother. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was yeah. good. Man. I hear you talking about polygyny. Oh, did you want to say something? Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to no. turn it off a little bit because this, this, this is crazy. Because Pharaoh, when you when you deal with Pharaoh, he got so much. You know, I heard you break down. That, not to go off the subject, but I'm gonna go off the subject a little bit. I heard you break down light before, and um, yeah, yeah, light. That was so uh-huh. so dope. <laughs> I know. I see you smile. Um, where are you today? Um, could you enlighten it? No pun intended. But could you enlighten us a little bit about light and um? where we are from and how we are connected to light. Yeah, 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 yeah. So light, you know, like even in the, and I have to use the Bible because. No problem. Whether I agree with people or not, you know, this may be their school of thought. So it makes it more, more easy for them to have to understand it. But even in the Bible, when they talk about God's angels, the word angels is actually the word angles. You know what I'm saying? We are just different angles or forms of light. And light actually is the best way that I can explain light is 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 the same way I explained it. You have the three stages of physical existence, liquid, solid, gas. Yes. But before we even or actually let me say it in order, gas, liquid, then solid. So before we even get to gas, which is the condensation of light, you know what I'm saying? We have to get to light. And light has different levels. So the layers of light that we see within our spectrum is only predicated upon the 20,000 hertz frequencies that we can digest within the cryptochromes of our eyes. So I said that to say this, before I even break down light, I want everybody to know that it's way, just like you have seven colors in a rainbow, and then within them color patterns, you have different shades. So like if we go to blue, we might have a thousand different shades of blue. So we just because just we got blue, we got navy blue, aquatic blue, baby blue, all kind of different blues. Then we got olive green, candy green. So even the seven basic layers of the rainbow that we see, aka the visible light spectrum, got thousands of shades. But then you got to remember that our sun only pulsates and vibrates at a terahertz frequency of 780 terahertz. And if you don't know what a terahertz is, a tera is unit metric form for trillion and the hurt is a beats per second. So the sun, if it was a drum, it is powerful to the point where it's beating 1,000 times every per one second. So the reason I'm bringing that up before I break down light is because let's say we go to another solar system or another galaxy where that sun is 10 times the size of our sun, mm. then you got to multiply that terahertz frequency. And now we have light spectrums and organisms and habitats that we can't even fathom because it's literally outside of our realm of reality. So now that we understand how important light is to the universe and how it actually sustains and, and either increases or decreases the magnitude of life, now we want to talk about light. What is light? Mm-hmm. Light is universal consciousness. <laughs> Just like I got the sun on my arm with the hands on it from, from Egypt, mm-hmm. the reason that the ancestors put their hands on the light and call, I mean, put the hands at the end of the sun rays is because light is uh, photonic, not protonic. So you got protons, neutrons, electrons. Light is photons. Photons are the, are the particles generated at the very tip of light. So like, for example, you see me with my sword, but then you got that part of the sword where it turned 45 degrees at the tip and then you got that point. If, if, my, if my katana was a, was a light ray, that point would be where the photons exist. 
So it's mm. kind of like the, it's kind of like literally a laser. Mm. And the way that light works uh, is is first created through thought, through consciousness. So it's just like when you get an attitude or you get worked up emotionally and bioenergetics will prove this, your heart rate increases and you start to generate electricity, you get more energy. So think of it like going out into the woods. How do you create, how do you create light? Because they say light is fire. That's why they call Lucifer the beholder of light, but they denote it as fire throughout all mythology. But how do you get fire? You first need a spark, electricity, just like a lighter. You got to take them two pieces of wood and spark them or take that stone and spark it. So this same process takes place in the universe through, through what is called omnipresent consciousness. So there are specifically points, specific points within the unified field of the universe where individual parts of the omnipresent mind say, hey, I want to bring into existence whatever it is life forms are getting ready to come into existence and so you get that spark boom now from that spark you create a sun now there's also other ways suns are created whether it be supernovas hypernovas killer novas but i'm not going into all of that right now but long story short you get that spark wow now out of that spark what a lot of people have been miseducated on is yes there's gaseous elements in the sun but the sun is actually not a big ball of gas it's a big ball of electricity. Yes. How do we know the sun is not a big ball of gas? Because fire and gas cannot breathe, cannot exist outside of where there is no oxygen. There's no oxygen in outer space. And this is why the this, this sun is a perfect sphere. Just like when you go under the water, go in your, you ain't got to go in the ocean. Fill your damn bathtub up right now. Put your face under there and blow a damn bubble. And it'll never come out as a cube. It'll never come out as a triangle. It'll always come out as a sphere. Because the natural shape of all uh, forms is spherical because energy expands in all directions, but then it attracts it attracts back to its equal center. And this is sacred geometry, et cetera. So what we have is a sphere of consciousness. The sun is actually a portal. And so now, boom, now we got this sun, we got this ball of electricity. So we have like what you could consider to be a giant battery. And then from near, we have what they call space dust. Now, space dust is actually just astrobiology. Biology, astrobiology is just genetic material that's floating out of space. Now, how would this genetic material get out of space? Some of it is naturally formed. A planet could have blew up. An alien could have died out there. The government could have sent somebody ass out there on a rocket and it crashed. Now you're floating through space. We don't know how the fuck it got out there. It's so many different ways. All I'm going to say is now you got this space dust floating through the solar system and then it comes into the orbital grasp of what we would call a star, a.k.a. a sun, because a star is just a sun that's outside of our outside of our solar system. So out of all of the stars you see in the sky and don't see at some point in time, this astro biological material is flowing through the universe. It comes into the orbital field of a star of a sun. Then it begins to blend up and get rotated like a. Uh, uh, like you would do a ball of Plato, a Plato, and then from there you have a planet, aka a celestial body, and you got living organisms on there, whether that be our planet or another planet, and everything that's being formed on this planet is being incubated by light, is being is being heated up and cooked up by the sun. This is why, the, for example, this this the core of our planet is six thousand degrees Celsius. And the surface of the sun is 6,000 degrees Celsius. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the sun is like 28 million degrees Fahrenheit. But I say that to say, you know, that our, our, sun, our, our, that the, our core matches the sun's surface because it was it was in perfect. It was in that perfect 93 million mile distance range upon the creation of this celestial body that we live on now. And so I say to say this light is involved in any and all natural creation of organisms anywhere there anywhere in the universe where a where a where an entity is created either unnaturally or naturally but outside of the spectrum of light it is always going to be transparent or it's going to be pale for example the lower you go into a cave or the lower you go into the ocean the marine life or the cave life automatically becomes pale or it starts to become transparent you know what I'm saying? And so I say that to say this, 
light is extremely important to not just the sustaining of reality, but the determining of what actually was created naturally. Because we can we can tell right now on the planet Earth, you know what I'm saying? If we was to do a survey, what does and what does not all belong here, not only based upon if it can be sustained by light, but also uh, the environments that it can or cannot exist in will let us know if somebody put it there unnaturally or if it was formed there, you know, uh, according, you know, let's say naturally according to its circumstances. So light is extremely important. Without light, we don't have physical reality. And once you understand light, I don't like using the term manipulate because for me, and I'm just saying it's me. When I hear the term manipulate, I automatically think of someone with negative intent. Mm. And I don't believe in trying to do witchcraft on somebody or shit like that. So I don't like to say manipulate. I would just like to say control. So once you understand the nature of light and you learn how to control it, then we understand the science of things like teleportation, because that's true. We understand the thing. We understand the science of uh, ultra fast sensory perceptions, because that's true. We understand the science of levitation and all the things. You know, if you could, if you could take a, a piece of ice and put it in a room that it turned into a, a a a solid, I mean, a liquid, and then a gas. You know, AKA what we call condens, uh, precipitate, uh, evaporation, precipitation, condensation. All of that is forms of, on, on very small levels, forms of uh, what you gonna call it different forms of teleportation, et cetera. So I mm. feel like once you understand mm. the science of light and that everything comes from light, and this is why we're called children of the sun, and this is why in Atonism, aka Buddhism, we teach oneness, then, you know what I'm saying, I'm not going to say nothing on the internet, but then you'll become opened up to what's <clears> called the sacred sciences, which our ancestors used to teach in the in the sacred mystery school and things like that, and you'll understand why the pyramids are lined up the way they are. And, you know, you'll even understand why a woman's womb and uterus in that area is triangular form and why when she's pregnant with a male, it's called the sun. So, you know, you'll understand, you'll understand a lot more things once you understand the origins of like how you, how you perceive reality. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to end this here. Physical reality is just one dimension of how you exist. And that's predicated upon light. You, got, you have not what's called a reflection, but a refraction. Mm. Uh, light, whether it natural sunlight is natural, unnatural, such as this light above me or the light emanating off my electronic device or this computer is called blue light. Mm. So, and blue light is harmful to the eyes, but you know, whatever, long story short, no matter what kind of light you're perceiving is coming into your, your eye, your pupil, and then it's going into your retina at 45 degrees is being digested by your optical nerve, taken to the back of your head, which is called the center of vision. And then from there, your brain is digesting every single sensory uh, that it can be perceived to let you know not only what you're seeing, but what you're smelling, what you're hearing, what you're feeling. You know, your nervous system is breaking it all down. And then from there, it's coming back out at another 45 degree. So 45 plus 45 is 90. And then you take this process, you put it to both eyes, they give you 180 degrees of peripheral vision. And then that is actually how you see. So with that being said, you know, light is important to everything we do. Your inner light is the electrical intervals that travel throughout your nervous system. And even when you lose, you know, uh, neurological connectivities within specific tissues, uh, you know, you can't move or you become handicapped. And this is just because light is unable to carry information to other parts of the body. And I'm going to end this answer here. You also was called the you, you also have what's called the DNA phantom effect where if i'm not mistaken it, it was it was the, the toads were turned into salamanders but maybe it was the other way around but either way it go there was a scientist who shot pure uh uncontaminated light he shot a laser into a a a, a basket or a, or an egg of frogs then he shined it on the egg of salamanders and the genetic dna information was carried literally by the sunlight to the other batch of eggs and it encoded it with the previous DNA that it was came in contact with before and the species came out as the other species. So light is extremely important. Everything travels according to the frequency of light waves. And without the existence of light, there would never be physical reality. There would no there would be no reality as we know it. God, that's deep. Dang, give me bombs. 
Can I ask a question? Yes, I, I just wanted to add on one one thing before you ask the question. Just want to add add this. When you said about water turning into um, different forms in a room, aren't we made up of water also? So look at ourselves. I just wanted to add, a, add exactly. on to you, Pharaoh. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, go ahead, uh, Nepal. Okay, so I really appreciate this this conversation or just hearing the brother talk about this. So I want to pick your brain on this. So I'm going to read something that I actually wrote, and I want you to let me know what you think about sound related to light. So when, um, we know that some of us know that electromagnetic radiation is what science defines as light. So when energy emanates from one source and is transferred through space, that can actually scientifically be defined as radiation. Sound radiates from one position in space just as light does. So I would love to hear you talk to us about the relationship between light and sound. I personally have seen that light and sound, I, I, I think everything is sound, but I want you to, to share with us what you think about uh, light and sound as far as, especially creation. And you, please let us know. You are 100% correct right now. And light is sound. Sound is the first stage of light. So it's sound allegorically would be like the conception of light. And then light would be like the baby coming out of your womb. So wow. light actually is sound. This is why, you know, our ancestors out of all of the instruments that we created, like the Egyptians created that harp. We also created that drum because we need that spark. Mm. So I want to say that now even the way that you hear sound mm. is through called bone conduction. And like, I, like a lot of people may not know that I know about this because maybe I might say I wasn't going to the doctors back in the sixties, but my research game is very great. If y'all remember back in the sixties and the seventies, and actually I remember the doctor doing this to me when I was a kid. So I think they just stopped this practice when I was a child. But if you remember back in the day, the doctors would hit you on your knees or your yeah. elbows with that little hammer to try yeah. to see, to try to test your reflexes. And the reason they would do that is because you conduct sound through your bones. So like when you hear a sound wave, you don't really hear it in your eardrum. It passes through your eardrum, it touches your skull, and then your skull actually disseminates the, the sound wave neurologically, and then your brain breaks down what you're hearing. This is why if music is too loud, you can burst the damn brain vessel because mm -hmm. you're not really hearing with your ear, you're hearing with your brain. So this is why doctors used to do that as well, to see if you're sound. Or I don't know if psychologists still do this today, because I don't even, even know what the fuck psychologists do today, <laughs> looking at all the crazy people running around. <laughs> but if y'all remember, one of the things that psychologists used to say and judges used to say it all the time was, are you mentally sound? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Nobody uh... said, are you crazy? They never said, are you crazy or are you sane? They just asked you, were you mentally sound? Yeah. Uh, well, you're mentally uh, balanced. So, because if you're not mentally sound, you can't see because you don't mm. just see. As a fact, you don't just see with your eyes, you see with your mind. Mm -hmm. So, if you can't see, you see physically with your eyes, but you see virtually, you see virtuously or vicefully with, with your mind. And if you're not mentally sound, nine times out of ten, you're going to see vicefully before you see virtu virtuously. Mm -hmm. And then also when we're dealing with sound, one of my chains that got grabbed, but I'm going to get it back. If I got to get it back in blood because the police ain't going to get it, then I'm going to get it back. But long story short, one of my chains that got grabbed, it had the eye of Horus on it, and that's symbolic to the corpus callosum of the brain. And that mm -hmm. deals with the five physical senses of the body, which is taste, touch, sight, sound, smell. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because taste, touch, sight, sound, smell is all perceived through your one sense, which is really your one true sense, which is your sixth sense, because in order for you to see, sound, a.k.a. light, has to come in contact with your eyes. Sound, a.k.a. gas molecules, has to come in contact with your nostrils. Sound, a.k.a. physical food or taste molecules, got to come in contact with your tongue, or sound in its purest form, got to come in contact with your ears in order for you to hear but all of this got to come in contact with your brain and got to be processed by your mind which means you really only have one one sense which is your mind and if one of these stop working you still have the capacity to think which means your 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 mind may not be holistically founded but you still could use it and once again this is the origins and the science of sound 
This is what cre- connects us to the creator. This is what connects us to the universe. Mm-hmm. I can't speak for everybody on the planet because I honestly, I don't know what makes some people get up and do the things they do. But hopefully, if you rational, this is what tells you not to go outside and just randomly kick a damn dog, you know, or <laughs> randomly just go destroy something. So, you know, being connected to the creator in your mind and, and being mentally sound and all of that is actually very, uh, not very, it is the most so-called spiritual and conscious thing you could be. You know what I'm saying? And I hope that that answers, sweetheart. Um, oh, yeah, that was beautiful. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yo, it's like, yeah, it's, like yeah. it's another term we say, um, they say, why why you hurt? You know what I mean? Hurts is a is a, is a form of sound too, feeling hurts. You know what I'm saying? You got that hurts is an emotion, but it still got something to do with sound, just to add mm-hmm. on to y'all. Measure of sound. Right. Emotion. Oh, we emotion. There. Emotion is just energy in motion. Mm. Mm, yeah. This yeah. is why you should never make this, unless it's off righteous anger. I want to say this because we live in a world where people try to tell you you should never be upset. Even mm. Buddha get upset. You better get upset. So it's just like, it's just like thing called righteous anger. But assuming that your livelihood is not being jeopardized or your children or your family is not being jeopardized and just assuming you somebody who just out here wilding like one of these everyday knuckleheads, then now I want to say that you should never make decisions based upon energy that's in motion because now we got what's called the law of cause and effect. And if I do Mm -hmm. something to you or you do something to me predicated upon how you feel and it's not righteously justified, then you will cause a permanent negative effect in my life or yours and you won't even feel like that down the line mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying you got yeah. people that get mad at their boyfriend or girlfriend for cheating <laughs> and then in the heat of the moment they kill them or they hurt them and they go to jail and now you in jail facing murder charges but it's been three weeks in the bullpen and you ain't even mad at that no more so it's yeah. like now you wish you would have never did it when in reality you should have just did what i would do no matter how disrespectful or betraying I find somebody's behavior, I'm going to always walk away. Because I feel like no matter if you would do that shit while I'm free, you would do that shit times 20 while I'm locked up. So there's no reason for me to try to get locked up behind what you're doing. But I say all of that to say, um, you know, be aware of frequency and be aware that you are not your emotions. You are just experiencing these emotions. Just like you can go to the ocean and a wave will crash on you. Nobody goes and jumps in the ocean and says, oh, I'm getting swept away by an an extension of myself. Even though technically that's partially true. We acknowledge that the sea might be rough right now. You feel me? Your yacht might be getting thrown around and then tomorrow it might be like the Bahamas. So so think of life like that. Think of Mm -hmm. life like a wave that sometimes crashes and sometimes it's still. And you can only control how you ride that wave within your own individual life. And we can only hope that people that are in different parts of the world are not purposely creating ways to destroy us in our individual lives. And that's the that's you know, that's my answer. Wow. Light is uh faster than sound, but you know, um that's why some people seem they appear being bright before they start speaking. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's just a little cliche. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's something to think about. Oh, you going in, man? This is this yeah. is great, man. You got any questions? This no. is uh, Coach Solomon right here, yeah, and uh, yeah. the Paul Farrell. You man, brother. You yo, your mind is. Yo, I agree with yeah. everything you just said. Like that was <laughs> you went in deep too. So I, I appreciate that. That was fire. I ain't gonna Thank lie. Very much. There's a lot of people. A lot of people are in darkness right now, and that's the and that's the sad thing about the world that we all are dark and we not. Seeing the true light within ourselves and enlightening the mind. That's dope. I I feel like at the from my this is my personal experience. Mm. Just from my this is from. I would like to say I I would like to say I'm the most intelligent black man in the world, Mm. but you know to avoid arguments for people who don't want to give me my credit, Mm. I'm gonna just say at minimum I'm in the top damn three. (laughs) From my from my personal. You and having become in it, I could say military, but I'm CIA level, so I think it'd be safe for me to say a CIA level general. <laughs> I think half of our community just need to get wiped the fuck out. That's how I feel. I feel like the problem with black people is beyond, and I ain't saying all of us, but I feel like our problem is beyond going down to somebody projects with a book. 
You know what I'm saying? Like it's beyond that. You know what I'm saying? Our problem is beyond going down to somebody. And I grew up. I grew up in the ghetto, so I ain't. I don't want to. Even though I've changed and become the best man I could possibly become today, I don't want nobody to see this and think that I'm a nerd. I didn't been in every. <laughs> I didn't been in the worst projects you could think in and think of in Buffalo. I didn't mm. been in more shootouts. I didn't. If you got a cousin in the military, I didn't been in more shootouts at 16. Then the fuck they been in on their whole deployment. So I say that this I'm speaking from personal experience. I think what we all I think what we need to do in our community is wipe that bitch out. We just mm. need to sit here and tell everybody right now what we need to focus on is all education has always been the thing. But mm -hmm. we personally I started a bank. And what I tell people is where Black Wall Street fucked up is they brought everything but a damn weapon. You know what I'm mm. saying? They went out there and they was million dollar, no disrespect, they was million dollars sitting. Like I tell people, Jesus went, whether you believe in Jesus or not is, is one thing. I'm just, This is my metaphor. So don't attack me, Christian church. But I tell people all the time, Jesus went and got 12 disciples. I wouldn't went and got 12 shooters. There you go. So, you know, I feel like Black Wall Street, they went and bought every goddamn thing, but at minimum a fucking rocket launcher to shoot down a plane for they got bombed. And like mm. I said, I ain't, I ain't looking to go outside and do nothing terroristic, but we do know that other races of people, especially white people, got a tendency to destroy our shit while we building it. So mm. now I said to say this, you got people like us that we peaceful, we trying to go forward, but not only do we got to potentially watch out for other races of people trying to destroy our shit. In my case, the bank I'm looking to build, but we also got to worry about niggas destroying our shit intentionally. Yeah. Or unintentionally, out of I feel like we at a point right now. Before we go to the next topic of questioning, what I would say is we at a point right now where we just need to do. It could just be for one day. This shit ain't got to be no survey. We just need to get every leader around the world that everybody listen to genuinely on the line. Like maybe get me on Fox or something and get me on there with every leader around the world. And just genuinely ask them, like, nigga, I don't need to know the strengths and the weaknesses of your country because I ain't trying to invade. Mm -hmm. I don't have no malicious intent. But I just want to know, do you got a population of people, especially black people, who are so far gone in their minds, like we see some of these motherfuckers in Chicago, that even if we left them alone, some way, somehow, that shit would still spill over here and be destructional yeah. to us. Because if you do, we ready to blow they ass up. And then after we, like I said, I call it, my suggestion is called 14 days of savagery. Bomb mm -hmm. they ass for three days straight, nothing <laughs> nuclear, because I don't need no shit mutating and we don't need to create no mutants or no new shit. We got to fight. Air strike they ass with some regular missiles. Send the motherfucking Air Force through that bitch about three days in a row. But before we do that, this is what I would suggest. Evacuate all hotels, especially <laughs> suburb levels. Let all of the inner city mothers, no matter what they race is, That's real. as long as they ain't got no no life threatening. If you got some shit that could get cured, nigga, get cured. But if you got a life threatening disease or some shit like that, I don't know what to tell you. But long story short, evacuate the whole damn lower class to middle and upper class hotels. Get a ass about two weeks worth of peanut butter and jelly and oodles and noodles. Y'all can live off that for two weeks. The Wi-Fi is free. And right. then put all the women and kids and the husbands in there. And for everybody that's in the streets who don't want to calm down, lead they ass down there for two weeks. Missile strike that motherfucker for three days. Mm. And then for the next and then for the next 11 days, nothing but helicopters just flying around killing everything that moved. And then after that, go right back to that little section, rebuild that bitch up. Put the community back and let's get some money and live our life. That's what I suggest. You know what I'm saying? That's what I suggest. Hey, so. man, that's could you could you sage it down just for like before you start that? You probably you have to run through there with some sage too. Just burn some sage. If, through if sage is going, if sage is going to work, it would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> work by now, it would have worked. So, now, so now you, you know, I want to. I do want to make a very serious um, comment about what you're saying. This is an ancient way of thinking where leaders, the leaders, the wise men and the people who led had this mindset. And then we, we I know it's an uncomfortable thing that you're hearing, but this is the way um, 
societies were balanced and stayed uh, stayed alive and they, they thrived. So yes, every civilization that we saw fail is because people didn't want to think like this. I'm not promoting it, but I, I hear what he's saying. I'm promoting you know, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, but but I listen. Rome fell because there was so much diplomacy, there was so much democracy, and so the the ancient ancient, especially. I mean, I'm gonna just grab Torah. You know the radical stuff you read, even if you don't have to believe in the Bible, but then you hear these types of thought, and you say, well, these these are the civilizations that checked people and there's a, a scripture in the bible that says there are vessels fitted for destruction that's what this brother's talking about mm. some of these people are vessels fitted for destruction and they're destroying us they're a cancer mm. so that's all i have to say i'm gonna leave that alone it's a little touchy oh, but yeah. thank you for oh, saying yeah. that. oh yeah and, and, and then connecting this to our culture right because i've read i've read every religious book you can read front to back i've read every historical scripture Mm. that you can read so i but i know fuck forget believe i know that there's nobody in the world breathing oxygen today that is more accurate in the history of egypt than me and mm. i say that to say this egypt connects to japan for a myriad of reasons that i've been broke down mm. but long story short this right here is also the japanese flag mm -hmm. and egypt connects into shintoism now i mm. and Atonism is the Egyptian form of Buddhism, but Aten to Egypt, to excuse me, to Kemet is, I can't pronunciate the name because it's a Japanese name, so I don't want to disrespect, but the but Aten, just like it's the highest deity in Atonism, which is the sun, in Shintoism, the highest deity is also the sun. And mm -hmm. I said to say this, Egypt and Shintoism have uh 100% similar teachings. And one of the main primary teachings is that humans are innately righteous, but you have some people that due to their diet or due to like your diet is not just fit, just not what you eat is what you see and what you hear. Mm. But due to your diet, you can allow yourself to become so unsound or so low vibrational in your mind that you can be influenced by a demonic spirit which is just mm. a spirit that lives in a lower level of your vibration. So long story short, what they teach is that humans or what we teach is that humans are innately good, but some people are maybe some more than others, but for the, for the most part, some people are just influenced by evil spirits. Now, whether they a natural born little omen child or not, I don't know. I can't tell you that, but all I know is <laughs> I don't have the time to be trying to figure out <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Are you a little Michael Myers in the making or not? Right. So I feel like sport. we live in a world now where we just have to ask, is your way of thinking and is your way of behaving destructional or infringing upon the quality of my goddamn life and the quality of the environment? Mm -hmm. And if that and if that answer is no, then you're you're you good. But if the answer is yes, it's one of two reasons. It's because you can help yourself, but you're choosing not to, or you can't help yourself. Either way it go, my suggestion is to blow your ass up and then send a helicopter in to get your ass out of here. <laughs> because we got plenty of people in the world that could live in the space you're living in and be more productive. We got plenty of plenty of women in the world that would love to be in a nice neighborhood instead of a homeless shelter because y'all niggas keep shooting up the goddamn neighborhood. We got plenty of we got plenty of more positive things we could be doing on the planet than trying to run around and arrest people, badass kids and family members all day because they are oblivious to the fact that what they're doing is so crucial. They're, they're literally ruining everybody else's lives around the planet. It's kind of like, mm -hmm. it's kind of like uh, when people pollute the ocean or pollute the beach. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's all fun and game. We throwing that shit on the ground. But what about when I come there with a beautiful woman? Now we can't even lay out how we want to lay because it's trash everywhere. So, you know, that's how I'm looking at the world. It's like people's behavior is literally toxic in the literal meaning. Like she said, it's a cancer. Mm -hmm. And what do we know about some cancers or some funguses? 
sometimes you got to cut your damn leg off to save your body with some cancers. We all watched that movie Soul Food. Mm. Soul Food was all good till they had to take Big Mama damn leg. Now she wish she never ate. So my thing is, the black community, that's that's the part where we at. We at the part where do... What communities represent the cancerous part of Big Mama's leg on Soul Food? And do these... And do these communities have enough sense to sit the fuck down for somebody like me to come in and advance it? Or do we got to cut y'all ass off like a leg? Because I ain't got no problem cutting y'all ass off like a leg. <laughs> and, and let me add this, That's brother. Right. Let That's me right. add this. Because I saw somebody say, shame on you. This has already been my for you. You obviously don't know me. If you think I'm just agreeing with him, I, I think this way first. I believe I always talk about vessels fitted for destruction. Priest, you know that there are vessels fitted for destruction. Um, the Bible says two thirds. That's most people are going to be destroyed. So don't get in your feelings. You don't. You you want to talk about Illuminati? You want to talk about how we got to get rid of this person, that person? But when it comes to the people of your own color who are all, the first ones destroying you, you want to get in your feelings. Let me tell you something, okay? We got to start with the people in social media too. You think I haven't been watching what people have been saying about me and this brother? We need to start with you toxic black people who love to see black people suffering and going down. You can't stand to see a brother be successful. You waiting for a brother to fall. And the minute you might see him having some adversity, you start cheering. You need to go first. You need to take the surveys first. So I I was just checking the chat. Don't Don't come at me right now. I'm trying to be, you know, really together here but let's start with listen Taro. i'm right with you You're right. i want to start with these negroes <laughs> i want to start with these negroes in social media first with that bombing yes let's lock them out let's lock them out for the helicopters <laughs> but like i said i know i know a lot it's a lot of black people like i, I want to say this before i go no. forward yeah go ahead go ahead brother there's a lot of people like well Pharaoh, you trading on your race i ain't trading <laughs> on my race i just I, like like for example, right my right. jewelry is let right. me say this. Right. It's time to get real. It's time to get real. Right. My jeweler, my jeweler is a Jew. Right. But I also know some Germans and some like I didn't grew like I said I grew up around them. y'all. A lot of people don't know who all the fuck I know. Right. But I said to say this. This is this is what the fuck Hitler felt like. Mm. Like a lot of people don't know Hitler issue on top of all of the other shit that I may disagree with. I ain't saying everything that came out of his damn mind I agree with. Right. But initially what pissed Hitler off, initially, I ain't saying that nigga might not have became a little drunk with his pie. I ain't saying that. But what I'm saying is initially when Hitler wrote that damn manifesto in jail, what pissed him off is the same shit that's pissing everybody off today. Mm. Pedophilia, transgenderism, child Mm. abuse, and inflation in the banking damn system. Right now, I say that to say this. In a way, I feel like I shit. I might as well become a black Hitler because everybody in the entire black military already know who I'm is. Before I even got drugged and be like, for example, people will say, "Well, Pharaoh, how you let Hillary Clinton get out of trouble?" I didn't have no choice. When I moved down here to Houston, the police tried to rape me in the jail. Mm. So, in order to get some damn attention. I had to let one of the biggest human traffickers in this day and time go just so a motherfucker that was supposed to be on my trip could let me go. Now, I say that to say this. I say that to say this. Before that, if, if you pull up, if we was to go on CNN right now and pull up the black, the, 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 the black personnel in the U.S. military, it's women in there that's going to know me. Uh-huh. It's, it's sergeant level police that's going to know me. I have already went to my community, not just the urban level, but the law enforcement, the military level with my information. And all of them treated me the same way. Basically, get the fuck out of here, you white boy. So now I'm at the point where I'm like, well, shit. I'm opening up a bank. I'm about to be a trillionaire. Who going to get it done? And if Hillary, motherfucker, I got to pay to get it done, bitch, you will see me with Hillary. If, mm. if I got to pay goddamn Xi Jinping to get it done or Kim Jong Un, I'm going to get it done. If I got to go to Japan to Fumio Kishida to get it done, we'll get it done. But at the end of the day, this shit will get done. It got to get done. And, and no disrespect, I can't count on niggas in the streets to get it done because obviously they don't give a damn. 
they still killing niggas today at Nipsey Murrow, and he ain't even here. I can't count on the black police to get it done because they too busy trying to whoop our goddamn ass. I can't count on the black COs to get it done because they trying to rape niggas and do gay shit. Hmm. I can't count on the black military to get it done because they ass ain't even paying the damn attention. So the only motherfuckers I could count on to clean up the community is people outside the community. So I just want to let black people know if you see me in your community with some black people, it's more than likely going to be black women. No disrespect. I feel like if I hang around, as long as I continue to hang around Asian men, I can't never be snake. And if I am snake, it's going to be obvious because I'm the only black one in the crowd. But I no longer trust, you know, no, this is no, I'm not attacking, but I no longer trust black people from CIA down to gangbanger because I've already been, I've already, y'all already shitted on me for 29 years. I'm letting y'all know right now as I start my bank, I ain't talking to everybody. But to those of you who act like y'all don't got no goddamn sense, I don't got no problem having a foreign military come in and blow your ass across the street. If we live in a community, if we live in a community where, like I said, I don't care if you're 30 deep outside. You supposed to be outside. I hope you is outside. But if a little kid can't ride a bike because his bullets flying, or a woman can't go to the store because his bullets flying. It's time to get y'all up out of here. And at the end of the day, I tell everybody this. If you really want to shoot, bitch, go be a cop or go join SWAT or go join the military. If you really want to fight, nigga, go box, go take martial arts. So it's like all of you, at minimum, nigga, if you just want to get it off your chest, you could go do paintball gunning. You could go do yeah. air assault. It's so many different places that's specifically made for you to shoot. That's Whether right. you want to shoot a fake or not, there's no reason for you to be outside making it to where can't nobody motherfucking live. Like Thanks. normal. You know what I'm saying? An old woman can't sit on the porch and just sit in her rocking chair and rock because a bullet might knock her ass out. There. So I just feel like if you don't got enough sense to at least say, hey, let me go to the military and try to stop a real terrorist or let me go somewhere where I could do this type of shit. Then you need mm. to, then, then you not no different than the police that put on the badges just to act like they playing call of duty and your ass need to get out of here. And I feel like shit, my confidence level in black people cleaning up our own shit is not there. What I will say is this, and I'm going to let y'all continue more questions. And I know we, I know I said 30 minutes, but we rocking y'all got me good. But long story, <laughs> that's right. I say that to say this. Here's here's why I choose J Japan, and I know Vietnam want me. They want me to move to Vietnam. I got Vietnam and Korea too. So, I, but I got to explain it to them why I choose Japan too. Yeah. Here's why I choose Japan. Not only do I believe Japan to be most historically in alignment with Black history, so it would be easy for me to teach my kids without feeling like like no disrespect to white people, but it's not a secret that, and I got white friends, but. It would be hard for me to teach my son history with my white friend's son in there without either me having to lie to my son or lie to his son or tiptoe around some shit. Because even though we, I might not be beefing with my white friends, what do I do when I get to the slavery part? Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like it's easier for me to teach black kids around Asian people because we got more of a symmetrical history. For example, the railroads that was built in America was not just built by only the Chinese. And I ain't trying to take they suffering away, but we was building it with them too. I got a whole thick ass book on it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our complaints actually are the same. Now that's number one. For two, Japan with the power of the Tory gate, if y'all don't know, when they dropped Hiroshima on Japan, mm -hmm. Japan became, if not the, one of the most technologically and engineered uh, excuse me, technologically advanced and advanced and advanced and advancingly engineered nations in, in only 25 years. Look at everything that I've accomplished in just five years. Mm. So if you take somebody like put me in Japan or when I go to Costa Rica, I could get people like y'all and, and, and Japanese uh, architects and Japanese engineers who are not, obviously they're not lazy. Obviously, they women is submissive enough for they men to work without a goddamn headache or you nagging. So if I if I could get somewhere where society is proficient, the women are playing their gender role, the men is playing their gender role, 
and you take a nation that could that could bounce back from a damn nuclear weapon and get in the front, and you take a man that could bounce back from wrongful convictions on parole and get in the front, and you put us together, as long as everybody sit the fuck down, we could get in the front. And whoever don't want to get in the front, you could get your ass shot. And I said that to say this. If, if, if the community don't want to do it, I am the only black man in the entire world because everybody's dropping the value of that, do- of that American dollar. Mm-hmm. I'm the only black man in the world that's able to hold on to this dollar. And I'm telling y'all now, I'm holding on to it. Mm-hmm. So if I got to send a Caucasian in there, <laughs> an Arab, an Asian, whoever the fuck I got to send in there, if y'all don't sit the fuck down, I'm going to send them in there. <laughs> I'm going to send them in there hard on your ass. And then we're going to build it anyway. I just want to say that. Well, Pharaoh, can you talk to us about That's BRICS right. a little bit? Let the people know about BRICS. Yeah, so BRICS is a, it's an acronym for people who don't know. So just like you got as soon as possible, mm-hmm. you have BRICS, B-R-I-C-S. Now, B is for Brazil. R is for Russia. I is for India. C is for China, and S, if I'm not mistaken, don't say it, is for South Africa. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm looking to include I and Nation up in there, so I don't know if we're going to call it Brixa. I don't know if we're going to call it A-Brix or whatever. We just, I, whatever the case may be, I'm getting up in that. Now, what's happening with Brixa is basically all of these nations are coming together to build. Mm. Mm-hmm. One thing y'all I've always voiced to complain about, I'll still voice to complain about is artificial intelligence. I don't mind robotics and technology, but when that shit starts to think for no disrespect, if I'm scared of a human pulling me over and beating my ass or planting drugs on me, you know damn well I'm scared of a robot. You know I'm scared of a robot. Mm-hmm. Right. Robot ain't got no guy. I don't give a fuck what you say. Robot ain't got no feeling. You could try to program it to have feelings, but if a man, if a human being can turn his feelings off and give you 20 years knowing you didn't do a damn thing. You know a damn robot created by that man ain't going to give a fuck. And if he didn't give a damn about me when he created it, I don't even expect it to be programmed to give a damn about me. So Mm -hmm. I'm against artificial intelligence, but for the most part, I want to be a part of this. Um, It's real. Y'all know that Queen Elizabeth is gone. You know my tactical self and my great research along with the quick response of Russia and China helped to eliminate Queen Elizabeth, who was indeed a factual reptilian. So I felt like, you know, with myself and with the BRICS movement, we could actually build. My goal is to reestablish Egypt as a global empire and and incorporate uh, Japanese architecture into my building and buy the materials from the Caucasian, those that I may need, in order for us to build. And I felt like it'd be no reason for nobody to fight because no matter what I build for black people around the world, every other race is going to benefit off it just off the fact that I'm buying the materials from them to do it. So there's no reason why we should be fighting and there's no reason why people should be ceasing to end wars. And if you ceasing to end any war, my suggestion is don't waste no ground troops. Don't send nobody family members out there to try to attack nobody or, or none of that. Just straight do they ass dirty. Let Air Force One do their job or let the Korean, let somebody Air Force do their job. Get, I, like I said, I don't know who local news station we need to contact, but get live on CNN, contact it, and just say all women and children, tell your ghetto ass friends and family to sit down because we about to bomb y'all. And we're going to get y'all about a good 24, 48 hours to get this many miles the fuck away. And if you don't, no disrespect, I ain't never been the type to harm no woman and child, but y'all ass and them strollers and everything will be flying through the air too. And, you know, because we trying to get this money, we trying to build, we trying to rebuild and redevelop the infrastructures of our cities. And if y'all niggas don't want to sit the fuck down, whoever I got to pay to drop a bomb on your ass, that's exactly who the fuck I'm going to pay to drop a bomb on your ass. And then I'm going to have them b- drop an extra one just to make sure. Because like I said, bring the troops home. It ain't no reason to waste no troops or no soldiers. We could just fly a bomb over that bitch, bomb it, and then send a chopper over that bitch for 11 days and shoot that bitch up. And then we do that section by section everywhere around the world where people act like they ain't got no goddamn sense. Mm-hmm. Yo, man, ladies and gentlemen. Nah, yo, Pharaoh's <laughs> going in. Yo, when do you plan on doing all of this? Are you, uh, is, your, uh, is Bricks in... Um... Is it in process now? Or you? Well, yeah. Bricks is in process now. 
But me personally, as embarrassing, as humiliating as, as it is, I just look at it as it's a part of the process cleanup journey. Mm -hmm. And so I'm dealing with court now. You know, I'm done with criminal court because, as y'all know, not only was I sabotaged by my bodyguard and, you know, drugged and set up this, that, and the third. Right. Yeah. Mm. I was, I got to say this, it's, it hurt for yeah. me to say it, but I believe to the best of my knowledge, I was sabotaged and set up by my, or let me not say I was, there, there was a sabotage and set up attempt placed upon me by my children's mothers. You mm. know what I'm saying? So now I'm going through family court, as embarrassing as it is, and as much as nobody likes the government in their business, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I already got visitation locked in for my daughters. I had family court about a month ago for my son. I'm not racist, but if you want to be an asshole with me, bitch, I'm going to be an asshole with you. It was a white judge. It was a white lady. Just like they normally do. They're automatically taking the side of the woman. Um, even though my baby mother was, I'm not going to say she's a bad person. I'm going to just say she made, I'm going to be nice and say she makes the decisions that a bad person would make. Okay. Right. I don't want to call her a bad mother, but mother, what the fuck do you want me to call you based upon your the behavior? But long story short, mm -hmm. the judge is taking the place of, at least at the time, what we all could agree on is the behavioral patterns of a bad mother. You mm -hmm. know, as much as I want to curse the judge out, I'm keeping my, my composure and I'm simply stating my grievances. And then the judge got mad because whenever you're an intelligent black man with an advanced vocabulary, it makes white people mad. So she got mad because I said, well, ma'am, you know, everybody in this courtroom took an oath to uphold the interested justice. And in reality, this court proceeding is not within the interested justice. She's lying. You know she's lying. I'm 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 undefeated in Muay Thai. I'm six and one in kick K1 kickboxing. Mm. I could go fight a random, you could put me in the fucking octagon with any fighter in the UFC next week, and I believe I'ma win. But you would sit here and let this woman come in here and lie and say I beat her like a man and I'm too dangerous to be around my own son. Mm. So on top of a bunch of other shit that was a lie. So I'm like, y'all sitting here letting this woman lie. Y'all know that she's lying, but you allowing her to lie because I'm a young, black, intelligent millionaire and you would rather try to send me up the boat through the system than allow my son to be properly raised. But yet, this woman could pull up at trap houses. This woman could let niggas crash the car. This niggas selling weed, random niggas around my son. And none of that shit is a problem. But me trying to get my son away from the streets I'm the bad guy. So the judge got mad that I said that. And then she also got mad because I said, and this is no disrespect to white people because I know that Haitians do it too. So just because mm. I'm black, I'm fair. The Haitians be sacrificing kids too. But mm. the judge got mad because I said, and no disrespect, but as a white woman, I find it hard for you to get up here and act like you genuinely give a fuck about my children when y'all sacrificing kids in the back. So the judge got mad at me and she hung up on me. So I say that mm. to say, I got kicked out of court. I don't know what the fuck the outcome was, but I got court again in July and I got to be to this court appearance in person. Now, hopefully a bra don't got to break out in the courtroom because they trying to grab me or sneak me up in the jail or do me dirty. Mm -hmm. But I got mandatory in-person court in July simply just to try to see my damn son. You know, if China watching and Korea and them Asians is watching, I ask that they be up in there too because I'm going to say the same shit then as respectfully as I said, as I've been saying it before. And then... You know, hopefully the courts do their job. I paid oh, damn near a million dollars in taxes. I pay eight hundred thousand dollars in taxes. I pay my taxes every damn year. I'm paying too much motherfucking money for the police to not be doing their job, for the military not to be doing their job, and for the courts to not be doing their job properly. So when I get down there, what I'm hoping happen is, and what should be happening is, I should be getting visitation for my son locked in, and then once that happens. I will feel more consciously comfortable traveling because I know in the back of my mind, I can schedule my, my meetings and my appointments uh, properly in alignment with the days I'm supposed to see my kids. And right now, y'all wonder why I haven't been traveling. That's why I haven't went nowhere because I don't feel comfortable leaving the country or I don't feel comfortable even going to meet with, like I love Abbott. I got love for Abbott from what I've seen. I don't know him personally, but to me, he does a great job. I ain't, I haven't even, even been comfortable enough trying to go meet the damn governor of Texas without knowing in my mind that I can see my sons and see my daughters because they mothers 
for some reason was not really paying attention in such a, crit a critical and pivotal time of my life. Now, once I get done dealing with the American judicial system for however the fuck long this is going to take, hopefully they don't drag it out. BRICS is the first damn thing I'm going to be running to. Kim Jong-un is the first person I'm going to be running to. Uh, General Flynn, I'm going to be... On behalf of General Flynn, I'm willing to hold the U.S. dollar and I'll start, you know, like I said, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I ain't walking into no goddamn military. Hmm. I'm not walking in it. I ain't walking into I don't trust it. But from a safe distance, I'm going to deal with it and I'm going to instruct it as much as possible. The only people that I feel genuinely comfortable with getting in the room with and being surrounded by is the Asian community. Anybody else besides that shit you gonna have to deal deal with me through the filter of the white man. So it's gonna go my community, the white community, the Asian community, and then I'm in the middle of that. So you will have to get through three layers of motherfuckers before you get to me. But with that being said, that's the structure I'm looking to have after I get through court. And since I'm speaking about it, um, I'm looking to have it built through what is called a meritocracy. So what a lot of people don't know. And it may not be your fault you don't know because they don't teach it in school. You know, they don't teach shit in school, honestly. But yeah. they only yeah. pretty much teach that it's two political parties. And unless you wasn't taught in school or you was raised as a modern-day slave, because, yes, slave ranches have just once again been, been raided by the feds. So believe it or not, white people still was over here doing slavery. So mm. long, outside of jail, because that's slavery too. But long story short, um... You don't just have Republican, a.k.a. democracy, or, or, or Republican. You have, for example, artificial intelligence comes from people that believe in a, a, a technocracy. That would be considered a technocrat. Someone who believes that technology and robots should rule society. Now, me personally, as I'm becoming a sovereign monarch and getting ready to build a bank and a palace on my land, and all of the intelligent, beautiful queens are more than welcome. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, I believe and meritocracy. So merit means exactly what it is. Not just uh, honor and integrity, but being the best. So I believe that not only is I, not, not, excuse me, I believe, I know that not only is our nation going to be founded in alignment with BRIC, but anybody a part of my political party is going to be a meritocrat. And the reason that that's important is because what the meritocrat formula is going to do is it's going to make sure you can actually do the damn job you asking for. Ain't nobody getting no job because you my friend and I know you. You ain't getting no job because you married to this. I ain't none of that favoritism. Ain't none of that shit. If you not the best at the position that your ass is asking for, if you don't really want that position, your ass ain't getting it. It's yeah. simple as that. So I don't care what you have. You, if you genuinely like to clean bathrooms, you could be a janitor. If you genuinely <laughs> cook, you can be a janitor. If you genuinely like to cook and you good at cooking, you could be a chef. If you don't like to cook, your ass is not being a chef. But all of that, all of that, let me give an example. Obviously, I'm the best at what I do. All my life when I was a kid, all of the positions that I always wanted growing up in Buffalo, and I'm mm. speaking on Buffalo. I'm not disrespecting nobody. I'm speaking on my city. And people can say I'm disrespecting my city. <laughs> well, my city disrespected me by doing this to me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If you get a by your parent and you talk about it later, it can't be you can't be disrespectful talking about child abuse to your mama or your dad. So mm -hmm. for me, this was child abuse. Every position that I ever wanted as a kid, the people, whether they've been staff members or coaches, they always gave the shit away to somebody that they knew, even though I was better. Mm -hmm. I remember this wow. shit all the way back. For example, it was a football team called the Ravens in mm -hmm. Buffalo. I never <laughs> wanted to play for the Ravens. I wanted to play for the Vets. My mm -hmm. cousin forced me to play for the Ravens. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't want to play football at all, I really wanted to play basketball. They forced me to play football, and then on top of that, you made me play for a team I didn't want to play for. Right. But mm. I'm going to bring this up. I, I remember, this is true, real shit. I remember going to tryouts, being the best nigga at tryouts. I remember getting the oohs and the ahs. And then on the on the day when they was giving niggas the, 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 the jerseys to join the team, I remember it was a nigga named Elijah. I never forget this nigga Man. ain't come to practice. This nigga ain't come to one tryout. Wow. I don't even remember what I this nigga mm -hmm. ain't come to the no work. 
Like whether you ran a lap and was first or last, at least you was running. This nigga wasn't there running no lap. <laughs> I, never, I never forget your mm-hmm. coach gave this nigga the, the running back position that I Man, wanted. Drop it. Somebody that was in that. So what? And I got stories like that all the way up. I got stories like that as recently as the last year. So my thing is by me being raised in the streets, but going to white schools and being smart. I know what it's like to be attacked by niggas that live in the ghetto because they think you white, a.k.a. suburb. And I know what it's like to be attacked by black people that live in the suburbs because they think you ghetto. So like I said, it got to be that that common sense grasp in the middle. But outside of that, what the meritocracy is meant to do is meant to eliminate that shit. So if you come up in here and you got what it takes then you got the goddamn job. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to argue with nobody about it. I don't want to argue about nobody in my personal life or none of that. So basically, it's supposed to function the way that society should be functioning, but we know it's not because people out here playing racial and biological and and stereotypical favoritism. And with Mm -hmm. our nation, it ain't going to be no favoritism. If your ass can't drive, your ass ain't being no driver. If you're not about that life, your ass can't do security, let alone be the police. If you are somebody that don't like kids, know the fuck you're not, not going to have a job around kids. This shit is going to be based upon who can actually do what it is they say they want to do. Don't try to impress me and show off for me and try to prove to me you could, no, we not, I don't need that. This shit, this shit right here is going to be for people that actually not only want to do the occupations, but have the skill set to do the damn occupation. And that's how, and, and I want to take that format to the BRICS movement, contribute it to the world. Anybody that's not in agreement with it, just bomb their ass and let's get it in. <laughs> oh, God. Let's, let's hold them up. Let's hold them up. Let's give them a round. Hey, shots for y'all that's not rolling with young Pharaoh. <laughs> hey, what he got set up? Yeah. <laughs> that's a bomb for you. Man, that that sound, man. This this sound. Well, if you look at the society, that's the way you do it. You do it. Um, the way you saying it is how to build a structural instead of the hookup. Everybody always want the hookup. Yo, just hook me right. up. Mm-hmm. Good. Right. Talk yeah. about that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know you. You have you. You when you when you rolling, you had your your. It, you 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 went through that a couple of times where you have your homeboys who just want to be around you and not really qualify for the job. But you just hooked up, bit have you know having a good heart as you looked out for some of the people that wasn't qualified for the spot. Tell us a little bit right. about that. You already went through that, huh? Man, I've been going through that all my life. I'm gonna give y'all the full. I'm gonna give you the full story because, like I said, I don't. I don't got nothing to hide. I'm and, and my thing is as a businessman, right? Uh, let me make sure if my screen my screen ain't froze, is it? No, you good. Nah, you good. Okay, cool. Well, as a businessman. Um, you know, I like, I would like to think that, uh, you know, anybody that's watching this that may or may not come behind me, you know, they could, uh, you know, they could learn from this. And so I said to say this, have, it's like a lazy employee. It's like when I first got out of jail, right. While I was in jail, I was telling people, but that's neither here nor there. When I first got out of jail, I remember telling niggas that was hurt, and I put this on. I put this on my eternal soul. I'm not making this shit up. I ain't trying to. Like I said, I'm not trying to down talk nobody. But this is why I'm not coming back for nobody in Buffalo. No, I don't <laughs> want to go to Buffalo and be hood rich and ride this. I don't, man. Fuck all that. So this is why I feel this way. I remember going to the hood and telling niggas, listen, this is how much money y'all making. I'm making more money than y'all. For even when I was out here, I was making more money than y'all. But I'm making more money than y'all. And I remember telling niggas, yo, I'm going to book the venue. Just go half with me on the venue or contribute something. And y'all niggas just come up there and do security or don't. But whatever I make off my events, I'm going to chop y'all out and we're going to get money like that. So it's kind of like how a rapper go on the road with their friends and they become their entourage. Mm-hmm. And I tried to entourage niggas. I'm going to martial arts class. I was offering to train niggas for free for classes that I'm playing for. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and anything else you could think of. And niggas gave me the same treatment they always gave me. They gave me to get the fuck out of here, white boy treatment. Oh, so I say that to say this. 
all the way down from that point, all the way down to my to my bodyguard doing God knows what behind my back and all of this shit where I'm at and people sabotaging, man, fuck all that. And I'm at the point now where, you know, it's like I wouldn't even think about giving somebody that access to me, whether it be business wise or personal wise, because I know it would be more harmful than helpful. But I say that to say this. If you're dealing with somebody that only want to deal with you because they see it's females that want to deal with you or is money involved, go ahead and get them to fuck out your camp now because that's somebody that I call in it for the fame. And right. I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. When it comes to my life, I don't want to deal with nobody that's in it for the fame. So I say, I have to right. say that this is another reason why the black community is fucked up because don't nobody want to do what the fuck they should be doing unless they think they about to get paid or they, excuse my language, I don't want to offend this beautiful woman here, but I'm going to just keep it, keep it raw. Or they think they about to get some pussy. And so my thing is, you sh- it, those two things should not have to be on the table for you to clean up after yourself, not litter, or just do certain shit. So I feel like at this point in my life now, I don't need no nigga to come around and do some shit I've been asking niggas to do for years. Niggas coming around right now actually... Is fucking up my flow and slowing me down. So my my advice to anybody that's really trying to take off, you know what I'm saying, is leave them niggas behind. I'm gonna give an example. You got a gentleman named Famous Dex. He from Chicago. He younger. Now, I like Famous Dex music. Now, some people might say whatever they gotta say about him, but I don't expect him to be a damn genius and a historian and a politician like me. Mm-hmm. So I, I accept him for who he is. But what I will say is obviously if you listen to his music and you've been watching him as long as I watch him, people would say famous debt. Like for example, you got people in Chicago that say, you know, you ask them why you don't like famous decks on the interviews. They say, because he left the hood and he left everybody behind. Right. If you, if you watch famous decks, technically they left famous decks ass behind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But my main thing is, how do you want, this man had to go, around a bunch of this is no disrespect to white people because i go around white people too the ones i should be around Mm -hmm. but long story short this man had to do the same thing every every other successful black person got to do he got to go to a a white crowd in order to get Mm -hmm. shows he -hmm. had to go to hollywood in order for his career to flourish you know what i'm saying he had to get women that was either mixed or not black to dance in his videos (laughs) so it's like this man had to go Outside his community again to get his brand and his music supported when right. he should have been able to get that in the city. He didn't get it. And now the city is saying they don't support him because he left him. When mm. in reality, nobody would leave their fucking support. If I was getting supported in my city, you think I would have been in a rush to leave? Hell no. Mm. So my thing is, just taking that analogy and taking my, my I mean, taking, taking my understanding of him and taking my understanding of my life, my advice to any and every black person that's watching this, if you want to be successful, leave your motherfucking friends and family behind because them going to be the first motherfuckers that's money hungry. If you on your deathbed, they're going to be the first motherfuckers trying to take your wealth and then put a plug on your ass. Mm. Go ahead and get the fuck from around them. I know we live in a world where people say you shouldn't trust strangers, but from my experience, I wouldn't be where the fuck I am today if it wasn't for me befriending strangers. And I ain't going to say befriend every stranger. God damn your mama and your daddy and your uncles and your cousins and, the, and Ray Ray and Tim, you know what I'm saying? They Nine times out of ten, they not going to come to your lemonade stand. It's going to be somebody like me that come and and and, and give you $100 when you only ask for a dollar. So I say that to say, you know, that is my advice to black people. Why are we not going anywhere? Is because you're afraid to get away from people who don't really support you because you're more afraid of hurting their feelings than you are afraid of hurting your pockets. Fuck all that. Growth. Uh, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, you killed that. Growth. Fuck <laughs> all that. Mm-hmm. Yo, growth. Yo. Growth. Yep. Speak that Bless truth. Me. I felt that internally too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's crazy because it's true. Hey, young Farrell, this is my son right here, man. This is uh, oh, Coach yeah, Solomon, peace, man. Peace, peace, hey, hey, oh, salute. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, brother. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yo, yeah. man, you're a deep brother, man. Like, I felt that. Everything you just said, and I, I went to school in the Buffalo area, so I kind of know the, the area. Which watch saying. this. Watch this. Watch this. What school you went to? Buff State. Right on Elmwood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yep. no, that's the hood. <laughs> and if, and if, I'm about to say, yep. Yeah, and that's if you the hood. Keep, if, you, if you keep taking your ass up Elmwood until you get to towards Minnesota and Main Street, mm-hmm. 
fuck somebody, you'll fuck around and get shot at the LaSalle yeah. station. Yo, Damn. I was a couple niggas parties get, got shot niggas at. Get, yeah, niggas get jumped in that LaSalle station. That shit is regular. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. you'll be lucky if you don't get your ass whooped Yo. in that LaSalle station. Nah, I've heard. I've seen some crazy things. Trust me, I ain't gonna what, lie. Like Rizelda, you said it, 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 that's what it's called, the Rizelda. It's called the Lasalle. He know it's called the Lasalle. Yeah. L A S A L L E. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And you gotta go to the. You gotta go to the. I'm telling you, he jogging my. Memory. I can tell you right now, if you coming from downtown, you gotta get on this bus <laughs> called the Twenty to get there. Yeah, but if I know you, you talking about. Get on the bus and you on the train. You gotta get on that train, get off at that Lasalle, and then catch that bus down. You Yo. either gonna catch, catch the Elmwood or you catch uh if not the Elmwood the the Utica the Elmwood one of the two or, or the Niagara one of the two mm -hmm. you gonna catch that Niagara or you gonna catch that Elmwood twenty to Buff State but the thing is the journey just getting to that college is like going through the jungle trying not to get got by a damn crocodile it's, yeah. or it's, just, it's like the the dangers that you face just going to school. Mm -hmm. I don't think people really realize that shit. Like no. you, you, you on your way to school with that laptop, but by the time you get to school, the question. <laughs> <laughs> Word. <laughs> I, nah, I had friends. That, people, people broke into my friends' cribs. Like it's kind, of, it's wild, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the home of the legendary, one of my favorite f singers, um, Rick James. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. I went to Rick James. I went to Rick James' grave years ago, and not only did I take a picture, I did it. Uh, an interview in front of his grave. Mm. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful, it's dope. beautiful. Oh man, young Pharaoh's going in right now, brother. Mm -hmm. Yo, that that's it. Why is that, man? So, I mean, when you try to get with your own, they they have this um this thing of crabs in the bucket mentality, and they don't want to see you strive and uh, push. You know, for the person who has an idea of to get out of the hood, because it, well, some persons just think deeper than the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. And instead of them falling in line and trying to uh, create this like snowball effect, they'd rather just pull down like crabs yeah. in the bucket. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Can and you know, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was go gonna. Ahead, go ahead. I ain't gonna cut you off. Go ahead, baby girl. Say no, I was gonna ask you to segue from what he, what Pree said to build. Can you talk to us about post-traumatic slave syndrome being encoded in our, like in us genetically? Because I think that has a lot to do with it. It's, it's encoded in us genetically, but at the end of the day, that shit ain't no goddamn excuse. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like somebody that get raped when they a kid, right? Mm -hmm. Why the fuck would you grow up and really rape somebody? Right. Like, like, let's just be real about that. Now, I ain't never been raped at all. I ain't raped as a kid or an adult, but I want to say this. I've been abused as a kid. Mm -hmm. And if anything... It made me too soft of a damn dad. Damn sure not too hard of a damn dad. So I say that to say, as much as we complain about slavery, why the fuck is a lot of niggas is, like I said, I, I'm going to be honest, y'all can call me a coon or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times I'd rather talk to my white friends than my black friends about what I'm going through in life. I'm going to just be honest mm -hmm. with you. So I feel like if, if slavery was such a traumatic experience, why the fuck is a lot of y'all niggas so brutal and horrible to deal with. A lot of y'all brutal, y'all just brutal to talk to, let alone I actually got to come com be a combatant with you. Yeah. So I said to say this, yeah. that crabs in the buckle men mentality shit, I feel like even that's an excuse now. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, this is what it comes down to. Some people have given up on their life. Right. And when they see your ass ain't gave up, they try to break your spirit to keep even if you're not trying to get rich. Because yep. everybody ain't yep. trying to get rich. Some motherfuckers is just happy being beautiful. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might got a woman, she might not be trying to be a billionaire, but she knows she's bad, and as long as she can wake up every day and be bad, she cool with that. But you got that one motherfucker that she might be, she, she may or may not be bad, I don't know, but you got that one female that she gave up on something in herself. Mm. And she's that other female that get up every day and walk that dog and jog and do what the fuck she's supposed to do. And they start trying to break your ass down mentally and emotionally. And if that don't work, they start trying to sabotage your life. So I feel like we got a lot of black people that have given up hope within their own selves. Why? I don't know. I don't know if somebody else did it. I don't know who broke a spirit. I don't know. 
But what I would say is we got a lot of black people who have been broken. Mm -hmm. And what they want to yeah. do is they want to convince themselves that being broken is okay by breaking you. And so I mm. equivalent these, I, I, I contribute these type of people to the equivalent of the type of person of, I don't know if y'all have ever heard of this, but this shit is true. It happens every single day. So please don't think it's not true. And if this story sounds synonymous to one of your friends or family, they probably was a victim of this. You got people that are do like a year. I don't give a fuck if it's a week or 20 years. I don't give a damn. You got people that do time in jail and then right before they about to get out, you got motherfuckers that are try to start a fight. <laughs> you feel me? Mm, or wow. you got a, a police officer that are plant a knife in your cell. You have been dead 15 years and your ass got 15 hours or 15 days left. And now you got another five years to do because somebody then threw something in your cell or a nigga then tried to start a fight with you. You What you going to do? You in jail, nigga. You better. If you don't fight back on the street, that's one thing. Mm. But your ass better fight back in the goddamn jail. So I said, like, a nigga started a fight with you. All the camera or the sergeant see is two niggas fighting. So now mm -hmm. you got the charge or you didn't lost your good time. Something happened. So I feel like this. Whatever type of sick-ass mentality or sick-ass spirit people like that have, it's the same type of mentality and spirit that live in the community. And that's yeah. why I say just bomb it. Once again, my su this is my suggestion. Stop arresting everybody. Put the courts on pause for a minute. Put the courts on pause. Don't take nobody to jail for nothing. Give everybody free food at the minimum level. If you your ass want to go to Red Lobster or whatever the fuck, or the Ritz Carlton, bitch, that's on you. But give everybody water, healthy juice, peanut butter, jelly, bread, butter, bitch, make a grilled cheese, whatever the fuck you gonna make. And then let's just go swipe off any and everybody that's evil or not trying to do better. And then we go from there. Because to be honest with you, there's been shit that I thought I figured out. And then I, and then after further study, I'd be like, I guess I ain't quite got it figured out. But to mm. be honest, I don't, I don't see myself wasting 20, 30 years trying to study the mind of a man or a woman. <laughs> I don't, that's a waste of time for me. It's just if you don't, if you don't have it in your spirit to not be jealous of somebody, not mm -hmm. be envious. Like, for example, I got a, I got stitches on my head because once mm -hmm. again, I was robbed. Now, if the nigga would have tried to rob me by himself, mm -hmm. nine times out of ten, I would have tried to take the weapon and finish it. But mm -hmm. there's nothing you could do when there's three, three young niggas with AKs. The only thing in my mind I'm hoping is... One of y'all don't shoot me out of fear because y'all mm -hmm. more afraid of me than I'm afraid of y'all. And y'all the damn niggas with the guns. Yeah. But I said, as I said to say this, I'm giving my ring to one of the young dummies. And I tell the nigga, I said, listen, I'm going to give you my jewelry, but you got to take it off me. So if you scared to take it off me, that's on you. But I'm not taking it off because I know one of y'all niggas going to try to shoot me if y'all think I'm reaching for the gun because obviously you more scary than me. So mm -hmm. nigga, if you don't rob me, nigga, you, you got to have the heart to just grab it off me. I'm going to stay still because if I take it off, I don't trust that you calm enough to properly rob me and you the nigga that's robbing me. So mm -hmm. while I'm letting the nigga take the jury off, he couldn't get one of my rings off. So I told once again, I'm, I'm calm and communicative through the ordeal. And I let him know. I said, listen, I'm about to take my ring off. Mm. One of y'all niggas, one of y'all young ass niggas better not shoot me. I got three kids, nigga. I could buy this shit over, whatever the case may be, or I'ma just get it back in blood in the second and then get my either way it go. Do not shoot me right now with your scary young ass. Mm -hmm. So as I'm taking the ring off, one of the niggas maliciously jabbed the barrel with a gun in my head. Now mm. my shit is stitched up. But if I show you what my shit, this is what my shit looked like before I got stitched up. And everything I'm saying right now, I'm finna make my point. Crazy. Everything I'm saying right now, I'm finna make my point. Now, this is what my head, this is what my face looked like before I went to the hospital. I don't yeah. know if y'all can see that big ass ass. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Right now, he, he whacked my ass with the but, chopstick. Now, yeah. here's the thing. What would make a man gun butt you with a gun during a robbery that you cooperating in? Mm -hmm. Right. The last time I checked, exactly, exactly. So my thing is, whatever type of spirit that nigga had, 
Like, do I believe I was robbed because somebody was hungry and they kid? No, I believe I was robbed because niggas just wanted to say, let's try to rob young Pharaoh and be cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yep. my right. thing is, whatever type of mentality and spirit they had, and anybody that got that, I don't want to get you flagged, but I'm going to just say murk they ass, murk they mama, murk they, murk they bitch. I ain't a fan. Murk, the, murk, murk anything connected to it and let's build. You feel me? You should be able to go outside, whether you a man or a woman, with your shit that you worked hard for mm -hmm. without somebody trying to take it. And if somebody else wants something nice, work your ass hard for it too, mm -hmm. or at minimum, you better go get you a sugar mommy or a sugar daddy. <laughs> go do OnlyFans. It's a million, like no disrespect. You could go do OnlyFans right now and get rich. It ain't no reason for you to be out here robbing somebody. So I or, they, or they could have just asked you for something. That's exactly what I said yeah. on my life. Maybe yeah. I said anybody that know me, no, I don't never try to play that card. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody that know me know I'm the. You could ask me, nigga, and I might. If I don't got it, I'll say, give me a week at max. Give me two weeks, and nigga, get it. Just make sure you get it back to me. What ninety days, maybe a couple months. But I'm definitely the type of person anybody could have asked for some money. But I just feel like I say that to say this. All of them type of little evil nuances and behaviors, we need to just eradicate them type of niggas. And it also, what it would do, like I said, I'm not in charge of the United States government. Maybe they want me to be, maybe they don't. I would. I don't know if I would want to be in charge of it. It's a headache, but I would love to continue to give suggestions as the number one black attorney. And as the number one black attorney and the number one black CEO, and I know how to save money and get money, it would be, rat as crazy as this shit may sound to some people, it would be the most financially logical thing to do to, phys to physically wipe their ass off the planet because at the end of the day, it's a waste of taxpayers' money. So now let me give you an example, right? We got, we got, let's let's not even say millions. We have thousands of people out here wild. Let's 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 not even add up all of them thousands of people that just raided that grocery store in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Let's just stay on me. I pay eight hundred thousand dollars just in twenty twenty alone in taxes. I ain't no telling how much more I'm gonna pay in the future, and that's fine. I don't mind paying my taxes. But the point is, look at look at how much money one person wastes, let alone three. So it takes on average $375 a day of taxpayers' money to house one inmate. Now, now when we say inmate, we ain't say convict, because you don't become a convict until you get convicted. So we just talking about people that's sitting in jail. So I don't care if you in jail for child support. I don't care if you in jail for running a red light. I don't care if you in jail fighting a case. As long as you are in jail and you are not, we ain't even talking about how much it costs to house a convict. We just mm -hmm. talking about people that sitting in county jails and holding centers and DFYs around the country waiting to go to court for whatever they waiting to go for. It costs $375 a day to house one of them. So you take $375 and you multiply that by, now it's 360 days in the year, but according to the Gregorian calendar, it's 365. So mm. we're going to go, no disrespect to the white man, we're going to go with his calendar. So let's go off the white man calendar. That's about $136,875 a year. So now let's just round that to $137,000. Now you multiply that, right? We got to multiply this one by three. Because it was three people that robbed me. So now we take $137,000 every year and we multiply that by three. That's 411000 That's damn near a Lamborghini. So for every three people in jail that, that's just sitting in there for a year fighting cases, that's maybe one house we could have bought somebody. That's maybe one apartment complex. That's a Lamborghini at minimum. So mm -hmm. I feel like now if we take if we take all of the criminals off the street, right? Let's say we take $137,000 a year and we multiply that shit by 500 random niggas that we go get off the street that's wild. That's $68 million a year it costs wow. just to hold them till they go to court. 
Mm. So we ain't even talking about if they beat the case. We ain't even talking about if they really did it or not. I'm just talking about holding them. Damn. So now, how do we save money? Let the people that should not be in jail out of jail. Let the people that deserve time served get time served. And let the people that are physically and, and psychologically chaotic and barbaric go to the graveyard. Because me personally, I didn't spend $800,000 on taxes for the police to lock a nigga up only for him to go in there and stab somebody, stab the police, rob somebody, rob the police, or, or continue to commit crime. Why am I paying tax money for the police to put somebody in jail to become a bigger goddamn criminal in there than they was on the street? It'd be cheaper for us to just bring back public firing squads and just murk niggas. It'd mm -hmm. be cheaper to do that. I'm telling you now, it'd be cheaper for us to bring back public firing squads or if you really want to save some money, take a page out of Hitler book and just burn their ass. Either way it go, Get rid of them. Get rid of them. I wouldn't even want to watch they ass. I wouldn't even want to be a CO that work on a unit where niggas is in there robbing each other, raping each other, stabbing each other. If it was up to me, every jail in the world that got niggas out of control, that's because you do got jails where niggas is productive. But every jail or prison or county jail or whatever facility in the world that's holding inmates that are basically no longer psychologically there. If it was up to me, I would sit in the military to just pop their doors and shoot their ass. They ain't got no guns in there anyway, unless you in one of them. They got, I ain't gonna lie, they got jails in Louisiana where the inmates got fully loaded pistols. I wonder who bought those. So my question is, if we want to talk about cleaning up the street, in reality, we gotta be honest about it. The streets ain't gonna play with us, so we can't play with the streets. Anybody that got an abusive mentality, anybody that got a toxic mentality, anybody who refuses, it's one thing if you rob it because you hungry, it's another thing if you rob it because you hate it. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Anybody that's out here acting off of evil intent, that's right. wrong head and just blow their ass away, and it'll save us so much money. It'll save us so much money. For $137,000 a year, we could have brought a damn missile. We could have brought a crate of food. We could have brought baby strollers and shit and gave them to all of the underage pregnant. You know, with $137,000, we could fill up 18 wheelers, take them to the inner cities. And for all of the women that got pregnant at 15, 16, we could donate that shit to them for a hundred. I would rather give $137,000 to women that have kids under age than give it to the nigga that gun butted me with the gun. We could just blow his ass away and, and donate the damn money to somebody that need it versus somebody sitting at a desk watching this nigga all day, making sure he don't continue to rob other people like nine times out of 10 he getting ready to do. So I say that to say this, if, if, the gov if America really wanted to save money, it would just slaughter everybody that don't want to sit the fuck down, let folk, Clear the K calendar out. The courts is already backed up anyway. Just throw everybody case in the garbage who you know should be in the garbage already. Let all of these black men out of jail for weed who you know should be out of jail already. Let all of these people that's in jail out who should not be in jail already. And to me, honestly, I think you should get out of jail for murder before you should get out of jail for rape. So as long as you ain't do some chainsaw massacre shit, like something where it's like, nigga, we know damn well you're psychotic. If you just, like, for example, they gave a man jail time because somebody slid in the public bathroom while his eight-year-old daughter was in there. He went in there and killed them while they was trying to rape her. People, hmm. like, that, people like that, go ahead and let their ass up out of jail. For anybody that's in jail for shit that they obviously should not be in jail for, let them out leave all the rapists in. And the reason I say that is because I, I know in my heart rape is a worse crime than murder because at the end of the day, just because you charge with a murder, that doesn't mean you're a murderer. In New York State, there's no self-defense law. So even if you legally own a firearm in New York State, if I come through your window and you shoot me, your ass is still going to jail. So you've got people in New York that's charged with murder where really 
in Texas, it would have been stand your ground. So I had to say this. All of the murder cases are arguable. But I feel like for you to hold somebody down and forcefully penetrate them with your penis, whether it be a man, woman, or child, I feel like not only is that below animalistic, I feel like that's the worst shit you could ever do. Plus, no disrespect to a murder victim, but if somebody shoots you in the head, you just dead. If somebody raped your ass or human trafficked your ass, you would never have a normal life. Mm -hmm. You would never have a normal sex life. You would never have a normal marriage. You would you will you will be you know traumatized forever, and you could you know have, probably have your healing or your coping mechanisms and your healing mechanism. But for the most part, I feel like sexual assault is more psychologically destructive to the cycle architecture of the human species than just simply killing somebody or manslaughter or hitting somebody with drunk driving with a car. Not saying that's not bad, but I don't understand why a why you get 20, 40 years for a murder and you get probation for holding somebody down and raping their ass. So I say that to say this. Basically, if you're not a rapist, the courts should be looking at your case and getting ready to let your ass go so we can start fresh in the courtroom and lock up who the fuck do need to be locked up. And if what you've done is too heinous of a crime, we should not be wasting taxpayers' dollars to lock you up. We should be using taxpayers' dollars for what it's for, developing the infrastructures of the cities, and we should be rounding up any and everybody that's super destructional and just eliminating their ass however means however by by any means necessary i say drop a bomb if if, if we want to want to waste that ammunition i don't suggest shooting them because that's a waste of ammunition like i said i know they don't want to hear it but i say take a page out of hitler's book put their ass in somewhere or something that we could set on fire and set that bitch on fire ladies and gentlemen damn yo Man, yo, young Farrell came, yo, he came, he, he saw, conquered, he got a hold of the pie craft, and he drove this, <laughs> he drove us into deeper <laughs> thought, man, yo, beautiful brother, yo, listen, we're gonna have to l let you go, but we would love to do a part two with you, man, you, your mind is incredible, I love the growth, and um, man, it's just a lot to to unpack I, I could be up here for hours with you man you have so much um in depth with you and um a lot of us could relate to the to those ups and downs going through life and and as young males you know what i'm saying young gods coming up into the thing you, you know it resonated with 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 football and and uh practice and just giving it to certain people man we we would love to have you on a part two man um if you would like that but we're gonna um let you uh we're gonna let you off the podcraft about this time, man. Yeah, this was really good. Thank, Thank you, you very much, beautiful. And yeah, whenever y'all ready, you know, for me to come in and do a part two, just simply shoot. I don't, I, um, you know, I don't want to mistakenly, you know, misidentify one of y'all, but uh, I believe it's a gentleman that's not on the podcast that connected us, but just one of y'all gentlemen. Shout out to um, Knowledge Born. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. One of y'all gentlemen just have him reach out, and you know, we can set it up. And it is what it is, but I just want to let everybody know that's from this podcast. You know, uh, if you're looking to get more of me, I was on YouTube. I was deleted off YouTube. Um, let me grab my book of facts that I always keep with me. We got so your we got your Instagram and link tree in the description. That's oh yeah, there we go. So for those of you who don't know, I have millions of followers on YouTube. I don't know if y'all can see this. I was wrongfully deleted off. I had to sue. Uh, YouTube, and then they slandered me and put me on CNN. You know, they had George George Soros write, write, a, write a false article about me, to which I had already exposed the organization he was funding, so it was crazy that a after I exposed it, they didn't know I did it, and they had him write it on me, but I had already exposed him, so it's basically like he fell right into a knowledge a, a, a trap. But long mm -hmm. story short, for those of you who don't know me, I go by Young Pharaoh. I'm the most intelligent black person in the world. I'm undefeated in debates for over 10 years. I'm 3-0 and against Harvard. I'm undefeated politically. Uh, I caught all of the human traffickers around the world, organ harvesting, you know, sex criming, uh, putting children in sofa and selling the sofa. You get a damn couch, take the cushion out, and it's a kid in there. Mm -hmm. I didn't caught, I didn't, I didn't did a greater job than the damn CIA so much to where I got a shout out from the CIA. And during this time, I was supposed to meet Donald Trump. And then I got, you know, uh, unjustly kicked out of CPAC. 
And then I had, once again, I had almost a million followers on YouTube because I was actively exposing COVID-19 during 2019. And I actually, I'm actually the one that stopped it from being released on the public. I'm the one that exposed Anthony Fauci. I'm the one that did scientific breakthrough, re scientifically, uh, excuse me, I'm the one who displayed breakthrough research in the scientific community. I'm the one that found out the origins of AIDS coming from leukemia via uh, Evo virologist. And I've done a lot more. I got four apps, four inventions. I'm a self-made millionaire. I have a trillion dollar technology company. And I say all of that to say this, I'm no longer on YouTube because they never paid me for three to four years. Mm. And uh, I'm actually suspended off my YouTube now. I have like five YouTube channels after they took me down. I'm tired of making them. So I'm on Twitch. Now, some of you may see Twitch as a gaming platform. Yes, I do game on there, but also Twitch allows me to do podcasts. So you can follow me on Twitch at Young Pharaoh Inc. You can DM me on Twitter. I just got back in my Twitter. I would have had a million followers on Twitter, but when I started to go viral, they blocked me. Elon Musk just gave me my Twitter back. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Pharaoh underscore Otten underscore. You can follow me on TikTok at Young Pharaoh Inc. You can follow me on Instagram at King Otten number nine. Me personally, to keep it simple, if you don't have a Twitch already, go make one. You can put it on your smart TV, smartphone, just everything you could do with YouTube, you could do with Twitch. And then you could DM me on Twitch if you're interested in any up and coming events or anything that I may be, um, you know, having in the future. You know what I'm saying? Get ready to do in the future. So, you know, that's where y'all can find me at. The podcast and stuff going. Yes. Mm. Beautiful. Before we let you go, before we let you go, because we talk about anime on the on the pod crap, you talking oh, yeah. about Japan. What's your favorite anime? Your top three. <laughs> ah, man, I'm a, I'm gonna go with classic ones because I'm I'm a classic dude. And I right, here, let's make it even easier: anime movies or anime series. Mm, either one, either one. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna give you my best say movies. Yeah. I'm going to give you my top three anime movies and I'm going to give you my top three anime series. Okay. And this is just based off striking my memory. Maybe I'll watch this over and wish I changed it, but I'm going to just mm. say what comes to mind. For a fact, Ninja Scroll is one of my all-time favorite anime movies. Uh, fact, Ninja go. Scroll. No. <laughs> yes. Ninja let's Scroll. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, one of my all-time favorite anime movies is Specifically, Street Fighters 2, the joint where Kenby in the car and Master Bison comes snatching out the car, and Chun Li and Vega had that fight scene in her apartment. Yes. That's literally, yeah, yeah, that's the classic. Okay. You know. Now, I'm going to be, be nice here, and I'm going to pick another oldie but goodie. And this one is going to be an anime movie, but I'm going to pick something that's not action packed. I'm gonna go ahead and say Bebe's kids. Ah, uh, okay. 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 So Bebe's, so that's my top three animated movies from childhood that I would throw on the table immediately. Now, yeah. my top three animated series, for sure, Rironi Kenshin is one. For mm, sure. Okay. Samurai mm. Jack for sure. Yeah, okay. I know, that's a fact. I'm mm. a huge Dragon Ball Z fan. Let's go. I know that. <laughs> I know that the series of Dragon Ball Z has changed. I haven't kept up with mm -hmm. it. Me particularly, I stopped caring once that shit started turning to <laughs> Dragon Ball GT and all of that other shit. I stopped watching. It's all about Broly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I like Dragon, I like Dragon Ball Z from when Garlic Jr. and Piccolo were. Oh, yeah. But, I, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pick Dragon Ball Z. I'ma pick Yu Yu Hakusho over go. Dragon Ball Z. Samurai Jack, Yu Yu Hakusho, and damn, what was the and Roroni Kenshin? And those, yeah. is, those is my flavors right there. Those mm. is my flavors. Awesome. Thank you. Hey. Hey. Thank you, young Fire. <laughs> you know, I had my fingers crossed because I was I was thinking somebody was gonna say Fist of the North Star. <laughs> that's, fi that's, fi that's fire. That's fire too. So I just wanted to throw out throw out what I know really really got me as a kid and right. what mm -hmm. I still watch right now. Right. No. Uh, you you right on point, man. That was that was beautiful, man. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, the great Pharaoh, man, young Pharaoh, man. It's like uh this is a this is a pleasure. We will do a part two, man. Shout out to Knowledge Born. Shout out to Nepal. Shout out to uh Coach Solomon, Solomon yeah. AD. Yo, we're gonna let you off right now. Do you have anything else you wanna say? 
Cause we we listen to music after this. If you if you want, or um, I know you do music too. We music. yeah, we we um we do a music session where we just we play music. Uh, the cast that submit music and um AD do, does that. You can you can check it out if you want. You can stick around. You can judge. Well, you know, you just judge, see how you like it, the music and anything. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah, most definitely. Well, I tell you what, I got y'all link playing. I got y'all link on my phone. So when whenever I'm not gonna stop y'all flow. All right. But whenever y'all get to the portion where y'all getting ready to play the music, if that gentleman is listening, or if he's not, shoot him a text to tell me to text me so I could just simply just click on and listen. All and right. um, speaking of music, for those of you who don't know, I actually forgot. And right. I know this shit might sound crazy, but I did forget. I got so many mixtapes and albums out, it's crazy. But all I'm going to say is, you know, I was I got to say the first, because it's a lot of people coming behind me trying to do this shit. Mm. I was the first person from Buffalo to do songs with Jada Kiss. I was the first mm. person from Buffalo to do songs with, with Yuck Mouth from the Loonies. Mm -hmm. Those of you may know him as the person that used to sing, I got five on mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I was the first person from Buffalo to do a song with Dizzy Wright. I was the first person from Buffalo to link up with Summer Walker. I was the first person from mm -hmm. Buffalo to link up with Waka Flocka. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a very extensive music category as well. And um, you know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing them things as well. So I want to throw that out there too. Y'all can check me out on um iTunes for what I did release, and the rest of my music gonna be released on my music platform once I release it. But long story short. I look forward to supporting y'all. Let me know when y'all do. And please, each and every one of y'all, don't just have my number. Take my Instagram. Y'all add me on Instagram. I follow y'all back so we can have conversations and, and whatever, whatever, because what I'm getting ready to do, and y'all can be involved. We can actually network this if y'all want to get involved. Mm. I'm finna start throwing video game parties and doing mm. esports events. So right now, what I'm over here doing is um, I'm increasing my gaming system uh, catalog as well as my gaming uh, catalog. So like for example, I don't just have um, Playstations and Xboxes over here. I got Super Nintendos oh, over wow. here. Nintendo 64, mm. Segas. So all of this shit. So basically any game you ever played from any generation, I'm going to have a console as well as any game that that shit ever came out for that I could think of. And I'm going to throw parties, and I don't care if you're a young woman, if you're an older woman, as long as you don't mind a little bit of wine and a little bit of reaper. <laughs> you know I mean? Like him and his son could pull up, y'all can pull up. And I'm going to throw events that are not just, you know, intellectual, but <laughs> to be honest, we could just come out and have a good damn time and play the game and go home. For anybody that's known me, I'm going to end here. Out of all of the events that I've ever thrown, I've never had one argument and one fight. I've been doing this shit since 2015. I ain't never had one conflict. My crowd is not like that. The only conflict I ever had was somebody from, like I said, no disrespect, New York is not a place that I <laughs> I'm going be honest with you. The only conflict that I ever had was I, I had a speaking engagement at a college in Atlanta and some Negroid Negro from New York, he was a Moor, no disrespect, but you know they always jumping out. I don't know what the fuck wrong with him. I don't know what's wrong with him. Some nigga from New York thought it would be okay to call the college and make a false bomb threat. He got my event. Yeah, he got my event actually canceled. Wow. I had to call the I had to call the police, which I have no problem doing. Mm -hmm. I hired a black officer who was a Freemason. And, and like I said, no disrespect, but I know they got them connections. I made sure my shit was safe. I had an older black gentleman who was a Freemason. We did the event. The event was beautiful. He would tell you it was beautiful all the way up until the same nigga who called. I don't know if he flew down there on a plane or how he got down there. The nigga flew down there, walked in made some loud outbursts. To be honest with you, I don't know what the fuck he said, but the video is still on YouTube if you want to see it. I got on a navy blue vest and a white collar shirt. And after he made that outburst, in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I'm about to have to whoop his ass. So I just, <laughs> I, that's all I could think of. I'm like, I'm about to have to Muay Thai this nigga up in here. So after he, made, after he made that outburst, I began to approach him because in my mind, I'm like, me and this off-duty police officer is about to have to eject him out of here now. So as I began mm. to approach him, he got up and he walked out. So I say that to say this, outside of toxic ass black people trying to stop my bag, I ain't never had an event from my actual inner following or inner crowd 
go wrong. I ain't never had security or police that was working my events, abuse nobody, do nobody wrong, any staff or any civilian that has been present. And I do crowds. It's been times I've done crowds of 300 plus people. It's, it's events I've done 300 plus people with no security mm. and we still don't have a problem. So I said that to say this, y'all make sure y'all hit me up on social media because I'm finna start throwing these events. I would love for y'all to, if not be a part of them, just frequent them, you know, and, and, and uh, what you gonna call it. For those Definitely. of y'all watching, following me, I mean, follow me on Twitch and get with me because I'm about to start throwing parties at, at uh, on the beach. I'm about to start throwing parties around here. And I'm going back to throwing parties. And as long as you somebody that know how to chill and just come to socialize, y'all are more than welcome. That's peace. That's peace. Yeah. All right, my brother. Yo, man. Uh, young Pharaoh, ladies and gentlemen, man. Word. All right. So you can uh, stick around. But AD, um, let's take it to the music, my brother. Word. All right. That was great. It that is was great. time. I want to say peace to uh, young Pharaoh. Peace. Yeah. Hey, so look, y'all hit me on the gram. Go on. Peace. All right, peace. 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 Nice to meet you finally. Definitely. Nice to meet you. Beautiful. Hit me on the gram. King I and number nine. All righty. Mm -hmm. All right. Definitely. Okay, sweetie. Peace. All right. It is time for a segment we call Song Promotions. Right. Oh, shit. Hold up. That was a little too fast. Oh, that was it? Well, I love a song promotion. Yeah. <laughs> Read my um, message. Send me the, um, the uh, 2410. Oh, okay. Send it to the, uh, send it right to uh, A Dizzle. How can I send, how can I send it to AD? Well, just send it to me now. Okay. Yeah. You'll okay. see when you check the, uh, I don't know why it's so fast. Up? Let me try one more again. Oh. Damn, hold on. Technical difficulties? No, this is all part of the show. Hey! Song promotions. Yeah. Mm. That's how we That's go. That's right. That's how right. Like, how you like them apples? That's right. Word. <laughs> we got a, a super chat here from Johannes Tesfaldet. He says... Can we get Solomon birth chart reading? Ooh. Interesting, interesting. We need Ka Zodiac for that. Yeah. Ka yeah. is watching right now also. Jeez, please. Uh, Knowledge Born can join right now whenever he's ready. We should have let him go in there. That's for next time. Hit a, what was, what's, what's your feral sign? Virgo. Virgo? Virgo. Yeah. Virgo. Okay. I know we would have went off. Yes, sir. That was great, man. That was that was that was. That he was, he was going in. Yeah, he was going yep. in and he went all the mm -hmm. way. In. Took all the rocket. Yo, he promised us in thirty minutes. He Kept went the, in, brother. Got to hundred. Got to hundred. You should learn something from Be it. Honest. It's all about growth. Mm -hmm. Growth in the mind, though. I got something from it. Yeah, growth yeah, in yeah, the it mind. Was awesome. Um, mm -hmm. priest, I sent you the email. Oh, okay. All righty. I don't know why this I couldn't find great. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, do we wait for knowledge or do we just go? Uh, um, I was coming. He's gonna come in. Yeah. Or well, yeah. real quickly. I, I mean, he he is coming in, but I want to say when he was talking about that video game party, you know, I was thinking about Priest. I'm gonna get him with the Pac Man. Oh. I was like. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, Miss Pac Man. Talking about all the different uh, gaming mm. uh, devices. Oh yeah. Yeah. You already know. Okay, but he didn't did he he didn't mention Atari. I wonder if Atari is still even out there. Well you said you said all oh, Which Atari? He said all oh, so I'm assuming he's saying all. Oh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Atari twenty six. I had yeah. the, the seventy five hundred. Seventy five, you was bougie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had the seventy five too. Oh, you online. was bougie too. I was but I really didn't have it. It was a family thing. It wasn't just okay. Mine. Oh, that's what it was about, baby. Well, you know, my generation's PlayStation. <laughs> oh, you went straight oh, to yeah, the top. Well, yeah, PlayStation, PlayStation yeah. Well. PlayStation. Sega. Yeah. Too. If you didn't play video games when it was just stick figures. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. picks, oh wow! Picks, what about picks, the wait, picks, the picks. priest? What was the um? Y'all know it, the thing, the ball bounces and you move Oh, that's the... it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that was it. That was the first game. It's so easy. It's, I think it was like tennis. Oh, I know you're talking about. I know yeah. you're talking about. 
picks. Yeah. Imagine good at games like that. They used to have a Don't game in New York. Tempest. You remember Tempest? You could just spin the knob and that little spider would go around the web. Oh, Y'all yeah, know yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, I couldn't get my hands on that one. Yeah. I, I know the first football, they used to have a... Um, oh, Dad, I'll take it there. I don't know what they're doing now, but they used to have the football vibrate, vibrating. Um, vibrating football yeah, table. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Could never get those. It was just... Damn. Yeah, the, the football because you couldn't control. It ain't mad, man. I, I used to think, yeah, you had no. the one that's just spinning one circle. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, that's kind of wild. Yeah. I'm, oh wow. You sit there for years. I mean, I was trying to get a touchdown because you never know. Is he you, you, you man with the ball? He like this. You took it all the way. Oh, like, like they moving that's side to side. There's no, there's no animation. That's there's no animation. Game. Yeah. They moving side to side. No, no juke moves. No nothing. No yeah. spin moves. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, I'm none not, of that. Nah, nah. Yeah, you don't control. I'm, you just. I'm going with Madden. Yeah. I'm going with the Madden right there. There you go. I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, Madden, huh? Uh, wow, how yeah. realistic is that? Yeah. Oh. Remember Duck Hunt, though? I used to laugh. I really thought I was something when I was doing the Duck Hunt with the. Mm. Oh, man. I don't think they would even give us well, anything jungle, like that now. Nah, nah. Jungle Hunt. Nah. I'll pay for any. Jungle Hunt. Jumping over the. Um, yeah, they do. They do. They compact them now. They have little. No, I'm saying like the, 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 the you know what? The pistols. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. The the peon peons. Oh, like yeah. those. The, peon, peon. It's, peon, peon. it's called duty. It's called duty now. It's called duty now. Call of duty. It's called duty now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's war goggles. You have to have um, the. They have war zone. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's all. That's all the games that's now now. Probably that's a great a idea. Joint. Having a party, having parties around um, gaming. That's a great idea, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or might say pitfall. Yeah. yeah, pitfall. Well, Dig Dug is the only one you can get a whole new game. That's all. I Okay. Not Dig Dog, yeah. Mr. Do. Okay. Now you're on that level. There's a diamond inside the apple. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like nah, they was just trying to. Ain't no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, wait, that's, not, that, that's, that's Mario. Da, na, 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 na. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, that's who he's a cave, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think you catch him. Shout out to the movie. I ain't seen the movie yet. Where, 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 oh, where, you where, gotta where, go see where, the movie. Where, where, There's a movie out there. Dun 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 Star was cool. <laughs> yeah, the mushrooms was mushrooms, um, and the wow. leaf and the leaf was weed. That's why he flew up because he was high. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know okay. yeah, they had all the drugs. Oh, yeah, he was getting that, getting that from. Uh, <laughs> but see, when you have mushrooms, you feel like a bigger person. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. You, you've you've initiated the pineal gland to release the dimethyltryptamine in right. your brain, and you're a bigger person. What was that Uh-oh. alphabet on the side of his? Go ahead, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You go on there. Yeah, it's dark all side. drugs. It's all drugs. <laughs> Man. Uh, the dark side of the game. Unknown Adam. No, I'm just chilling. So I woke I up Mr. early. Young Farrell. Huh? Unknown Adam was asking me a question. I said, no, I'm chilling. Hey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, I mean, whenever you have you a lot of submissions today? Uh, just a few. But sometimes they submit late, so we'll see how many we can get in before. Go. Uh, we close and I out. hit you with the your your your, your yeah. YouTube. Should so, I start with that? Yeah, let's start with that. Okay. This, 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 yeah, this is a song with um my man Fanatic who passed away um uh, from a- Arizona. This song is dope. It's featuring the Paul. She's singing on it. Okay. Oh wow. It's great. Okay. Yeah, I should have left them there, but it's it's so dope. I was actually there when they when they did this uh two four one zero. Shout out to Naughty. Shout out to everybody in um Blueprint Record Studio, man. Was it kill, I had to do that because I, wanted, I wasn't Killer Sire. Yeah, Killer Sire. Oh, Shout right. out to my man Raz, too. What's the right. name? Of course, Fanatic. And Fanatic, definitely. R.I.P. Fanatic. 2410. That's the name of the song? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Room 2410. Yeah. Room 2410. <laughs> 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 I'll take my time on you. Screaming. Screaming. I got you screaming. I got you screaming. 
killed it. Oh man, wow. yeah, you killed it in the park. That was cool. That was, that dope. was fire, man. Yeah. Wow, thank Guilty, you, family. Fire in shout the out chat. to Fanatic. He's rest in power. Yeah, rest in peace. Right. Rest in Fanatic peace. Fanatic is no longer here with us in the physical. Uh, but you know he he um he mixed it, mastered. It, he that's him singing on the hook mm-hmm. and everything, and uh, Nepal came through and blessed it on the end. That was a great. You got nothing but fire in the um chat room. That's, that's fire in the chat. Fire in the chat. Fire in the chat. Let's go. That's Let's like go. Love the craft. More to come. You gotta love the craft. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful. Yes. Great voice. Great voice. Thank you, Solomon. No problem. Coach Solomon in the house. Thank you, thank you. No problem. <laughs> wow, that was nice. That that's bittersweet though because it really hurts that he's gone. But, yeah, you know, understood. Really understand. Really? Yeah, that's sad, but you know, he gave us yeah. something. You know, at the end. So that's hey. right. Mm-hmm. And he's with us now. He's still with us because energy does not die. Mm-hmm. It's transformed. It stays around. That was thank and you for playing that priest and AD. Course. Yeah, of uh, course, man. All right, let's let's move, let's move on. Let's get out. All right, coming up next now, we got a submission from uh, Mosquito. Year, oh, year of the Mosquito. Oh, okay. Buzz, 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 buzz. Hey, hello, Mosquito. That's hello, right. Mosquito. Where, where I was born at? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the name of the song is Royalties, produced by Year of the Mosquito, Master of the Universe. Here we go. Ooh, on that picture. <laughs> Mosquito, Master of the Universe. Interesting beat. It's mm-hmm. kind of cool. Yeah, I can actually fine. hear you on that. Yeah, definitely. It sounds like something that'd be on your album. Yeah, definitely. Which um, one, though? What y'all think? <laughs> I mean, it's too late for Forrest, but I would have heard that on Forrest, too. 
Yeah, Death Leaves was dope. Um, you know, oh, it was okay. a it was a pinkies up type of beat. Um, I like it a lot. <laughs> it was uh, it was you could I could see somebody going hard on that. So you know, definitely was a dope beat. Hello, mosquito. Hey. Yeah. Hello, mosquito. Oh my gosh. Uh, it moved me to tears almost. Well, I held them back. It's absolutely beautiful. I I want to somehow have something to do with that. It is absolutely angelic. Uh, he pulled something, some kind of frequency he's on that touched my soul 100%. That was so beautiful. So, 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 so beautiful. So thank you, Mosquito. Wow. Um, orchestra, man, is... Uh... Like we said, we're going to do the aura orchestra. And uh, definite music like that is uh, brings the aura up. The aura orchestra. <laughs> mm. Y'all heard it here first. That was fire. So I think I should name the whole production team the aura orchestra. But we're going to do it live. Me, AD, uh, Dave Flores. You know they play live. Mm-hmm. We're going to do it live. Live bands. Then we got, we got, we got singers. Yeah. yeah, right in the paw. <laughs> That's right. Hey. And writers. That was beautiful, Priest. I was going to message you. I'm just going to say it right here. I, I want to do something with that. And that was outstanding. Hey. Please let me, Mosquito. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Even, even Coverboy liked it. Hey. hey. Yep. Je- oh, wow. Jestic. Let's go. Oh, Coverboy liked it? <laughs> yeah, he loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <I'm> t- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, here we go. You ready? This next one is by Cap Jones featuring the GOAT KP. Oh, wow. Name of the song is North Star. He says, peace to the GOAT, killer priest, and the entire craft. Since we were talking first of the North Star, I figured we could run this. Shout out to the Royal Priesthood, Nepal, Solo Gem, AD, and Knowledge Born. Peace. Peace. Name of the song is North Star. Hey, Solo Gem will make his debut on... uh... Boris? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. When's that dropping? May 1st. Yeah. May Day, May Day. What's, May what's Day. It? 51. Mm-hmm. Area 51. Yeah, 51. May Day. And what else is a, a five more? Five more. Oh, it's my sister's birthday. Yep. Happy birthday, exactly. Nalani. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Five. What else is power? Power one. Power knowledge. Power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you actually have 515 because 23, if we put the 23 only. No, I'm just going deep. I'm going deep. Hey. Never mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> shout okay. out, happy birthday to uh, Nalani, too. Yeah, shout out. Let's uh, go. Birthday is going on. Yeah. Aries season. Uh huh. All right, here we go. North Star featuring Killer Priest. He said there's a there's a, 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 a intro to this one, so watch out. Oh, okay. okay. There it goes. Priest. Oh, yeah, we got to watch it because unfortunately, I am Killer Priest, but <laughs> the label's like, we can't play it. Yeah, it depends on the song. Mm. Donnie Arcade. Like a cross check, life dissolved to respect. All you've got left is the debt. 
chosen men become lonely when the ego exceeds the part of the heart that connects them to God. Tribulations abroad, the factions rule and fraud, and the fear of what isn't real removes logic. Scientific nano microscopic particulates designed to override the Fibonacci sequence. Man tuned to 5G frequency or delinquent. Can't buy, sell, or trade unless you join and march in the parade. The dragon takes the stage, and now the world's crowned a new false savior. Look ahead, embrace knowledge itself. The end is not defined by wealth, it's defined by the time you've spent seeking the truth you've spent teaching the youth. This time is here for you, make a move. Look ahead, embrace knowledge itself. The end is not defined by wealth, it's defined by the time you've spent seeking the truth you've spent teaching the youth. This time is here for you, make a move. Yo. Rolling rays across the golden age Electric guns that shoot the solar rays Ultra waves Push his brain slow into the volcano Into the molten grave Pitchforks in my sick thoughts Killer priest wears the witch cross Crows on the bible Bones around the idols Padded rules bunch of cycle Shepherds of the devil disciples In a cycle Fleets of devils Selling in the cerebellum Islands of the god killer cherubim Bow before the nephilim Suicide thoughts crack the courts Lift the fort Drink the court, push his faces to the stone, drag the corpse from the throne. John the Baptist, meet the Twilight Zone. Best rap on the microphone, take the chromosome, slam it in the end zone. Look ahead, embrace knowledge yourself. Damn, it's not defined by wealth, it's defined by the time you've spent seeking the truth. You said, teaching the youth, this time is here for you. Make a move. Look ahead, embrace knowledge yourself. The end is not defined by wealth, it's defined by the time you've spent seeking the truth. You said, Yo, it's crazy because I was already feeling the track when it started. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like Cap Jones. I like the way it sounds. I'm like, okay, I can see where he's at. And then it's so strange for you to all of a sudden appear in the track. When did that happen? Because it just shifts. <laughs> it shifts the dimension. Right. It's like, okay, I've just been teleported. It's a priest track now. Do you know what I'm saying? It's weird. Once you come on, it's like, yo, and we're all very familiar with, you know, your words, your sound, your lyrics and everything. I don't remember so that. That's crazy. I don't know what verse that was from. What verse was that from? I don't know what that was. I, <laughs> I'm convinced there's two killer priests. There's one. Yo. <laughs> I don't yeah. remember that. that. Yo, but that was fire. It's though. weird how that, that I don't want to say the energy changed, but the yo, atmosphere changed once you popped Mc, in. Men Mc, Mc Kemper really great in the oh, building. Yeah. Fire in the building. Men Kemper right. in the building. Peace. Yo. Peace, Mac. Oh. That was fire. Yeah, did man. that happen? Yo, yeah, I'm honored to do a song. But I don't even... <laughs> you, you, you took it next level. I don't know. It's hard to explain. <laughs> hey, anything for it, Cap Jones. The dimension changed. We were all teleported once you came in. It yeah. was just like, ooh, there's mm. that priest track going on right here. That's crazy. That was cool. Fire. Yeah. What do you think? You know, Cat Jones, you know, I'm always saying great lyricist, great message. Always is always going to go. That was a good hook, too. Um, yeah, it was good. Like I said, like I, like you said, I wasn't expecting my da- hitting my dad right away. Yeah. So I was like, okay, wow, that's kind of crazy. But you know, to say say my dad, like I know his lyrics already, so not like I'm praising him. He already knows it. Yeah. <laughs> but dope song, dope song, good message, no star. Yeah. Yes, loved it, loved it. I I love. Again, it, it's like a theme of something celestial. It reminded me. I don't know if you've ever seen the planet. You can listen to the sound of the planets, the way the music that that whatever that sound effect was, whatever that instrument was, the synthesized instrument. It reminded me of something very celestial, and it was very beautiful. And I love the message. Like I said before, he's always so clear. Yeah. And his lyrics are so on point and professional. And then to have Priest come in, come on. That's yeah. like, this is like a phenomenal hit. So loved it, loved it, loved it. Shout out to Cap Jones. Yeah, great job. Yo, I don't even, I don't remember doing that, yo, but it, it, yo, the song, even before I came on, I, I was loving it. I was loving that, um, the, like you, you know how to make songs. It like, fit uh, very well. Yeah, it fit very well. That verse, cause you know something, you can't just throw sometimes on any acapella on any beat. Yeah. That yeah. acapella fit on that beat really well. Yeah, I yeah, man. That's all I'm gonna say is, yo, um, royal priesthood. 
Well, I appreciate it. This is what we doing. Yeah. Shout out to Cap Jones once again. It's, it's a sample. Oh, okay. What, what what was the sample? The the verse. Let's go. Oh yeah, he's in the chat. Yeah. All right. Cool. Let's keep going. Next, now we've got a submission here from Almighty L Infinite from Springfield, Massachusetts. Ah, L Infinite, another 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 preset. Mm -hmm. The building. We big. We big. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is the MP3 submission, and it's called Out of Body. I'm out of body. I left Mars in a vessel made of flesh. Water rained down so I could take my first steps. With no light in the womb, I wasn't sure if this was death. I guess I paid attention with a little bit of sense. Come on. Your higher powers meditating on a chat Except the sky opened and the clouds fell down A cloud seeding took place once I touched SoundCloud I'm from the age of the ageless Appraised by the ancients My soul is the pilot to this body that's a spaceship Wow. I'm the plug to unplug from the matrix There's levels to this shit See your attic is my basement Now face it, the universe expanded as I make this And turn the ring of Saturn to a bracelet the fabric of time is my blanket These gems I break down so your bitch can have an anklet I'm dancing with the stars cause it's spacious No tongues on my Asics Gel light threes in the garden burning weed Hershey goes both ways, your wife is a freak I rock your by baby right outside of her Jeep Dream chasing a menage, I'll inherit being me I'm out of body I'm out of body I'm out of body. Someone please tell these motherfuckers that I'm out of body. I'm out of body. I'm out of body. I'm out of body. Someone please tell these motherfuckers that I'm out of body. Really ain't no squares in my circle, but we misfits. Ran off from the plug, I had to risk it. You know you getting chicken, keep a biscuit. All the bowls got resi whipping biscuit. Told my little niggas chill, cause they rich kids. But they feel to give it up, it's some bitch shit. And if I choose life over pride, I'm a bitch then. Play tough and I'ma end up with your bitch then. I let you slide while I slip in. You slipping. I'm way too fly to be grounded. You can't plug me in when I'm the outlet. I'm always having a ball, I'm well rounded. I'm out of body. Uh, 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 uh. Like that verse? I like I'm that. out of body. I'm out of body. Someone please tell these motherfuckers that I'm out of body. I'm out of body. I'm out of body. I'm out of body. Someone please tell these motherfuckers that I'm out of body. Told Morpheus I know karate. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you might have to do a collab with him. Oh, we did, man. Me, him, and um and Bada, man. Shout out to Ken Bada. Yeah, that stuff we did, man. Um it's definitely Royal Priesthood, man. He's are they coming back. You should do a track with Almighty L Infinite and Donnie Arcade all on one track. That'd be shout out to Donnie Arcade. Like the three of you guys together. And, and then have Donnie do the video? Yeah, make Ooh. that happen. Make that happen. It's, see, that's the, the, the thing about a group. Mm -hmm. You could do a song here. Two people could do here. Then we could, you know, structure it like this. Then you have something right here. You know what I mean? A little Da Vinci so solo gems. Um, you could have different ways you do it. But that was, that was uh, definitely dope. I don't want to uh -huh, skip my I'll skip uh, go ahead go ahead AD what you say that's it I'm done so. oh okay I mean that was booming that was bumping you know what I mean definitely dope dope no, I liked it a lot and then I enjoyed it oh I loved it I, I the, the music reminded me of like some X-Files stuff mm. I like the music and his rapping is awesome I, I, that line um I'm always having a ball. I'm well rounded. Is that what he said? <laughs> like that. That was good. I'm gonna use that one. Hold on. AD like that line. It hit me. For real? Not flat. 
<laughs> you having the ball because I'm well rounded. It Dang, was a dope yeah, bar. Right there. Let's go. That yeah, was dope bar. I mean, some, it's rude. undeniable. Yeah, that was undeniable. <laughs> nice. So, that was dope. All right, let's move. All right, let's go. Next down, we've got Oni Dakini oh, uh -oh. in the house. She has a song here called Podcraft. Hey. Wow, okay. This one is three hey. minutes. It's an MP3. Here we go. Master, I am puzzled. That is the beginning of wisdom. I have seen you laugh, and I have seen you cry. And you do not. We are part of The purpose of discipline is to live more fully, not less. How shall I know if my sorrow is only the echo of self-pity? Whether conscious or cosmic, it's never nonsense. Mega levels are microscopic. It's a killer priest project. AD control the rocket. Before we land a plane, many things we engage and explain. The unexplained, without mass. Welcome to the killer priest podcast. Shout out to God's wrath. Stars and mass. Avatar path. We can take a style back. Large man. Welcome to the killer priest podcast. With indigenous anger, but in a piece of poison prison to keeping a gangster. But why you thugging and pimping? You really shucking the job of a master that got you touching his private. White Jews control the banks, cutting the diamonds, exploiting other people's resources to usher in violence. They keep original people killing each other off, control the money in the media. That's how they keep your brothers lost. So when you ever see them fake Jews or corporate white dudes blasting each other, never because they watch the right moves. Their capitalism got you cocking the steel too at your brother head because you don't know who the real Jew. You might catch the Israelite right up in your rear view. So I might have to cancel my subscription to pierce you. My redeemer had wounds that you could put your hands through. He paid the price for something that Muhammad can't do. Sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. He lost our to live without Yeshua is haram. Back in the day, slave master put a chain around your neck. Now they switch it up. Try to change around the set. They make you think you're free if they can make the sound connect. Listen, all they had to do was make you proud again. The love of money and now the chain around your neck. But just remember, as your dick rope is dangling, that demon's strangling your life to cage you in your favorite sin. You know what I mean? And it's the truth, dick me. You need to get yourself about that devil news quickly. Wow. <laughs> she saved the best for last. That yeah. was increasingly getting better. Like the first one was interesting. The second one, I think, is ready for an artist to be really creative on. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You create a good space. Uh, where it wasn't too busy, I can definitely hear an artist on that second one. Someone pointed out the snares are up, AD, and yeah, they were. The snares were good. 
So I like that second one a lot because I think it gives plenty of uh, space and platform for an artist to do their thing. And then that third one was like done. That was great. I don't know who that artist was, but uh, if you made that beat, that was really good. That's that's ready. That one is is Spotify ready. You know what I'm saying? What y'all think? Yeah, last one. He's um, artist came really appropriate on that beat. I like the beat a lot too. Um, I like the 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 in between the second one and the last one. Mm-hmm. So that one very un un how you say unorthodox. It? Or, or, yeah, you got it. <laughs> I, I was gonna mess that up. But, um, <laughs> That, I, I heard it, but I like I I enjoyed it when I heard it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that one a lot, and then you know she has she's very creative. She's very creative. I like the first beat, the second beat, so you know it's definitely dope. This oh, one. Yeah. Oh yeah, my bad. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, you, you want to go? I'll go. No, nah, no, nah, I laughed. So I laughed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I just want to say, one hundred percent, I love her submissions because she's so artistic. You know, like I said. I'm a big Bjork fan. I know this is oh yeah hip hop ish. Yeah, but you know she gives me that vibe. Like you, you listen and you listen, and you catch more, and it's all it's so everywhere, but it's not. It's controlled chaos, and I love it. I love what she uses. She's very unconventional, and um, yeah, I like the advice you give to her too because she. I can tell she listens. I think that. You tell her to do one specific thing. She's the type of producer. She will just knock it out the park. Yeah. So if you say, do it this way, she'll do it just the way you like. So I liked it. I liked it a lot. I like the remix of the pot crap. Yeah. All right. I know that's not easy because she didn't have the acapellas. So she had, to she, kinda, she had to kind of create the acapellas out of that beat by lowering frequencies in the other beat to make it work. Like I can hear what she tried to do or what she did. Okay. Oh, cool. she 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 called this uh, remake so the podcast. She called it the podcast. Oh, okay, okay. No, I oh. called it the remake. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, you did. All right, no uh, doubt, no she's doubt. Like, she who who gonna remix my podcast? No, <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't know. I was um that was the look I I got from it. You know, my different I have different expressions. That was yeah, that looked like mm. it's yeah. like wow. And at the end, it was like. So I'm gonna say, you know what I mean? The experiment, what you're doing, what she's doing, I like the composing of it because she's doing other things and not just she's coming with different sounds, almost like a female RZA, you know mm. what I mean? Coming with different sounds, and um, I don't know if she's looking for herself or that's just the the weird part of it, but it's just like she's searching and grabbing elements, and it's all good because she's putting that ingredients in there. Go ahead, put the nuts in the inside of that uh, cake. You know what I mean? Throw throw a little bit of cinnamon in there. Put the what? The nuts inside of the cake. The crushed nuts. It could be in the yeah. pecans. Yeah. 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 I knew that was a setup. I jumped. I jumped in that one. I jumped in that one. He's like, the what? <laughs> the, the, <laughs> I'm always no, but that's the, that's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I jumped right in that one. But that was that was good, yo. She's always elevating. The MC you had on the end was. Great, it fit with uh um um leaving it off to where you know it was a story. As all your stuff. Okay. Oh wait, wait in the chat, Shamil Allah. I thought so too. I didn't say it, but now that you said it, it sounded like as if Solomon was going real hard, and that sounded like you, Solomon. Oh, what what, what did I say? What, what the happened? MC at the end of the of the track, it reminded oh. me of your voice. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Hey, maybe, said it in the chat. Yo, that could be my AI voice. Like Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. It could be. It could be me. I right, listen yeah. to it again. I right, listen okay. to it. Maybe. Yeah. Never know. Shout out to Oni Dakini. Yeah. Oh, it's another one of those days. It's in another one of those crafts where all the submissions are so on point and awesome, and I love them. And what's weird is what what where we at? Uh, well, technically we got the. No, uh, I'm saying retrograde. Yeah, yeah. So we're uh, back with it. So tomorrow on 4:20, yeah. Mercury retrograde officially begins because we've been in shadow, and it's an Aries new moon eclipse. Yeah, we just start, man. I can't hold up, man. I can't deal with this, man. We, we when is ret- retrograde? Well, is just start using the shadow face. It's not always a bad thing, though. We just got to be aware that, you Bonds know. Bonds happen extra backwards. Though. Yeah, it's like, things can be off. It's, it's like, Bonds is extra. It's like, y'all be waiting at the red light for a minute. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. The Ubers are going to be late. The Ubers are going to get confused. Uh, they're going to have the block. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. Phones and your DoorDash is never going to be delivered, but it's going to say it's delivered. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. Up is down. You wait at the. You waiting at the stop sign. It's not like waiting at the stop sign. It's yeah. Stop sign to change. This is like you really ready to get it on, and you just like damn. You had to remind me today it was retrograde. Yeah. I went to this spot and it was like movie shut up shop. Mm. <laughs> you know you expected one thing. And then you get there, it's just like, yeah. like this one time, real quick, a little story when I was at, when I was in, um, I was, it was, um, Asco? Whatever, it was overseas or whatever. And I got, I missed my flight. So I'm getting there, I'm running to the flight. It was like, yo, we only got, <laughs> got one more flight, but um, you can't get on it if this, if this, um, what was it? It was a group. It was like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, one seat, one seat. Next thing you know, I'm sitting there waiting. I'm going, oh, man, I got a chance. I just want to get home. I've been out on the road. Yo. It was a whole, it was a whole school. It was like, it was like. The Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, and it was like, we're getting on the plane. It's like, I was oh, sitting there. Okay. I had to sit and watch it. It was like, it was like, if. You know, if they don't come, <laughs> it was like, man, they bought everybody. It was the whole school. It was the principal. It was like, yo. And they just took off, man. I, I sat there. <laughs> that lady looked at me. She was just like, <laughs> oh, I had to man. take a day for that one, man. I had to stay overnight. Oh, man. Yeah. Europe, man. The little kid, like, look at you and, like, point at you? Huh? Well, they was just happy to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was. I felt like that. I was took just his like. Took a tongue out, too. Like, who, you know, I was just waiting, like, I can get on the plane, <laughs> right. man, and go home. Oh, yeah, Chad, I'm by myself. <laughs> Everybody going. All right, let's go. Man. Yeah, yeah, but um, so tomorrow you can expect miscommunications, emails won't be sent, text mishaps. But what's happened on the 5 1, though? Traffic jams, train delays, missed buses, things like mm. that. It's the basic stuff. Also, your exes might call. So, like, watch oh, out for your exes trying oh. to get back at you. Oh. Because during Mercury, Mercury Retrograde, <laughs> the exes always think back. Uh-oh. Of what they used to have, so yeah. if, like I said, things would be backwards. So if you get hit up by your exes, <laughs> this is the time for that. You know what I'm saying? So be careful. I get hit up every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, you said know. exes is ba- trying to get back at you. Yeah. yeah so only, only that. So, so if it is that way, then you, your ex is trying to get back is the one who messed up, or maybe. I mean, I mean it depends. I mean, Everyone has a different situation, yo. but. You'll notice that exes always seem to reappear, or not just exes, but people X, from your past. Yeah. X marks the spot. X X marks the spot. Yeah, but tomorrow. I never hated somebody more. Excuse me. I never hated somebody more than the my one of my fellow PTA members, Connie Randall. If you're out there, if you show up tomorrow, I'll know that AD is absolutely right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, within wow. the next two oh, weeks. Yeah. Name dropping. So people I, from your I past. Name dropping. I hate them. <laughs> I, I ain't name dropping nobody. Sorry, Amy. Go ahead. I'm people from ahead, the past. Amy. People from you know even old friends or old right. acquaintances What's can pop up What's in the next two weeks. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but tomorrow yeah, yeah. is supposed to be a very mm-hmm. intense day because it's an, an eclipse oh, in Aries. Come on, damn. What, what else okay. is coming? So damn, the eclipse. You you like the prophet that that comes back in the days? Everything I'm saying is on is on <laughs> Google. Tell us more. The, you know, it's all Google stuff. Y- y'all can check this out on Google too. Mm-hmm. But like tomorrow, but that's why they used to bury the prophets and get mad at them. Like where you're getting mad at AD, kind of. <laughs> yeah, because I don't can kill the it. messenger. Imagine, <laughs> imagine, yeah, imagine being a king back in the days and prophet coming. You like, really? Famine, yeah. You, know? wow. <laughs> you up there, Germany? It's gonna be a famine. <laughs> it's like, well, the kings would ask yeah, the uh, astrologers when to go them. to war. They would consult yeah. their astrologers to when to do things, and you know nowadays they're using it for stock market when to do this and do that. It's crazy. That is, you know, let me say this. Right, because I do, and everybody can relate. Do used to hate back in the days. Weather reports mm. they were like they were like like it was going to be a rainy day. <laughs> yeah, like, it's like yeah, you waking up <laughs> rainy day. Mm. You're like damn. Some people rain might make you feel good, but you know mm-hmm. rain. You always wanted to go away. You want that sunshine. Yeah, back then, unless you was a little weird, or you could be creative. <laughs> From I Seattle. Grow stuff. Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. And, uh, Man. <laughs> Yo. Here we go now. That's funny as hell. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, man. Aaron. No. If you're watching, say hi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to my brother Kyle. It's his birthday today. Hello. Oh, nice. Shout out to Kyle. Shout out to hey. Kyle. 
Aries month. I have the most in my family. I've realized we have the the most people. Uh, they're more Aries than anything else. Mm. 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 True fighters. Right. Our, our Aries are ready to fight if they have to. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, warriors. You know, ruled by Mars. Aries. Ruled by Mars. Mm-hmm. Isn't, isn't Taurus tomorrow? Aries. Huh? Isn't Taurus is tomorrow? Um, oh, the 21st? Well, Taurus You're coming right. In, we are going into Taurus. Yeah, so much but we got, we got, we got the moon. <laughs> no, the <laughs> moon. <laughs> the moon's got, got a it wrong, new moon <laughs> eclipse in Aries. Yeah, yeah, yeah eclipse. So it's opposing, you know. And it's retrograde, so it's off. Now, yeah. You, you do, nah. But no, he's AD, right. I was just joking. The ideas are great. You, how did you find out Young Pharaoh's sign? I just Googled it. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, what's the sign? Uh, Virgo. Virgo. Oh, Virgo. Yeah, Earth sign. Same oh, we had we had we had the Earth. We had the balance. Yeah. Yeah. We had the Earth, Air, Fire, and Water with AD. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. E water. Wait a minute. Earth what? Earth with Pharaoh. Earth Solomon with... and I are, are Air. Your right. Fire and AD's Water. We had the balance. We had all balance. Well, where's Wind at? Us. Yeah. We're air. We're air. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Earth, wind, and fire. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me start. Go ahead. Let's go. All right. Next now I'm we got. I'm drunk now. You too drunk? Hell oh, yeah. Od. Yeah. Od. Yeah, I'm not gonna front. Uh, <laughs> by the way, we we're drinking. Um, I didn't even. I would, both these are cere- um, ceremonial grade. You want, you want some tea too? Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I got you. This right here is. Um, I'm drinking two. T- this is mine. And you you know what? When you open it, I found out something else. You, you got any more of those on sale? Yeah, I got a little bit left. A little Ooh, bit left. Get them now. Just get them now. You, you can make weed out of I mean, you can have a weed cup where you put your weed at. You can put your you weed says, in here. Yeah, you put your weed in it afterwards. <laughs> you drink some tea. Oh, it's all calm. It's all it's dealing with calm. Dealing with yeah. Weed, mm-hmm. kind of can, you can use this as a collective item also. But I only got a couple left, though. I only got a couple left. Yeah. But we get we get have some tea. Oh, this right now too. I got mm-hmm. you. Let me heat this up for you. Go ahead. Yeah. What you drinking on? Uh oh yeah, you're drinking on some classic just well, water, right? I'm drinking the one and only, the OG Agua. Yeah. Agua water. Agua. But after this, I'm can gonna I, go ahead and make some tea. Okay, I'll argue with that. Okay, I'll argue with that. Definitely. You know, tea is like an ill tuxedo for water, right? It's like Yeah. It's like it disguises it itself. Yeah. It's like, whew. But, uh, yeah. Nah, yeah. Without that. I'm form of the fruit. Because water, water disguises itself as as fruit. Yeah, we're going to go back. as fruit, too. Puts on the orange suit. Puts on the oh, apple yeah, suit. Oh, yeah, it does. It goes into everything. And it also just, it, it's also us. We That's are. Right. It's inside of us. You know what you eat? Mm-hmm. Somebody said matcha killer. I like that. I'm the matcha man. Matcha, matcha, matcha man. Matcha, matcha man. Yeah. <laughs> I took you, it over. You read the Ma'acha? Yeah, well, you can see. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. And you know what? Ma'at cha. There you go. Ma'at tea, right? Cha in China is tea. Mm. Cha is tea, chai. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Dang, that's good. Wow, we're breaking codes over here. Speaking of breaking codes, I I, I want to show my book, but then I don't. Because I don't want any. Oh, go ahead. No. I want any haters getting it yet until I finish it. Anyway, okay. I got a great book. I got a secret weapon in the mail. Thank you to out. Shout out to Josh. Tell me, I forgot his name. Dang, the author. Tell me, you know his name, Priest. He's a friend of yours. Say, Doctor Josh. Doctor Josh. Josh. Josh Bowman. And his beautiful wife, Doctor Megan. Megan. Josh. Megan. 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 Um, I have to sit down with him. I can't wait to start reading it. That's like dynamite in somebody's palm. <laughs> I when, you get, when you get a book, it's like dynamite. Have it. <laughs> Boom. Oh, yeah. I'm going to read it. It'll be done with it by the end of the day. Weaponize it. Use it for love. Use it for... Can, I will be right. reading the Sumerian text. Hey. Yeah. All right, let's go. All right. Uh, we only got a couple more left. Next now, we've got... Oh, my automatics. That's kind of dope. Oh, my mathematics. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, math math is math. Math yeah. is, it means truth and balance and humor. Huh. name for somebody. My, I didn't know that. My mathematics. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, that's dope. Yeah. Oh. All right. Um, that's funny you mentioned that because the name of this artist is Mathematical Jazz. <gasps> God, that's crazy. You see? So cool. 
cool how that laid out. Synchronicity going on here. See, it's that eclipse, yo. Uh, yeah. I thought it was the tea. The I next 24 hours would be interesting up. for everybody. Yeah, give him a cup. Okay. Mark my words. Your next 24 hours is going to be interesting. Yeah, journal it, everybody. Get a journal, even if you do like a log or write it down. Remember this last time, huh? Yeah, 420 is going to be a memorable day tomorrow. I'm not even going to smoke tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're not smoking tomorrow? Nah. Hey, that's why. That, hey, listen. That's why I'll be. Yeah. Pick up at I've night. already been super high before, so I'm all right. <laughs> 420 tomorrow. All my 420. That's why I was just kept seeing 420. Yeah, yeah it's 420. Yeah, it's 420 tomorrow. That's, a, that's like a holiday. Yeah, it's a yeah, storm. I like that. You know. 420. Yo. I mean, college. All right, so Mathematical Jazz right. submitted a track called TikTok. It's an MP3. Here we go. Okay. When we had backyard cookouts, they were playing in a barbecue. I don't even know you no more. Who the fuck are you? Truth be revealed like next morning makeup. When you see what's on the knees, you will wake up. The way you live in is in a slow spot. Slow bots about to be replaced with robots. Message from the universe, nothing normal. They trying to push us under the sea like Reef Squirrel. Devil been here since he hopped, skipped off the boat. Put our ancestors in class, then sold his whole earth. He's a detox from all the evil. Soil was ruined. Every breath is lethal and rap be uneducated That's a rap placing people in solitary That's a trap Alarm going off, don't snooze Every second waste of getting closer to doom TikTok, the matrix is falling We all got shit to do Why you stalling? The one that depend on nobody Won't live my life in a control I lie. see the bait, take the hook Get to fake you a rook Why you take what you took? Situation is shook the reasoning a bit much deeper, shit steeper, seek how I learn in the teacher. The devil foot still upon the neck, do you know how strong we are, have you checked? Purpose of curses are sitting on the surface, which category are you in, hope it's purpose? Unique abilities, universal will to breathe, dig deeper like Sean T. And you will sneeze, want to take everything you got, they want you to grieve. I align with a different power, this is all a breeze. Focus and energy on everything positive, I just had to keep going to unlock my gift. Begin to appreciate the present, not one wrapped in paper, you pass. TikTok, the matrix is falling, we all got shit to do, why you stalling? The one that depend on nobody, won't live my life in a controlled body. There's a lot of mentally ill beings with ill dreams, reason why there's kill scenes. Letting situations break them brain dead, could it be side effects from arranged meds or tap water? Should've never drank what was tap, when you hear tap, you can sense that the devil's back. When he comes around, he's annoying. Now I said the best when he said poison How to get here, who sent it Y'all familiar with the word eugenics But you still wanna be a movie star Till you get thrown out of a moving car I was told to sell my soul I'm too close to the universe, hell no Never listen to a snake, ignore them That's more time that you wait, stop snoring TikTok, the matrix is falling We all got shit to do, why you stalling? The one that depend on nobody Won't live my life in a controlled body Yo, I like it The verse was dope In my mind, I wanted to hear that TikTok uh, chorus to repeat You know what I mean? Mm. I was waiting for the repeat of that TikTok chorus Because it fits so well in the track Where you were just like, TikTok um, no, 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 you know what I mean? And I wanted mm. to hear it again, like tick tock. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to hear that repeated uh just for my ear. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? That's just the way I would arrange it, is mm-hmm. to repeat that chorus at least one more time in the end. Uh other than that, everything else is dope. Like the mix was cool, snare's cool, I like the beat. Uh that was fire. What y'all think? Yeah, dope flow. I you know, I definitely enjoyed it a lot. Um it always goes full circle whenever, like, the show has a... Sh- you know, we have a topic, whatever we're t- talking about. Young Pharaoh came on. Yeah. It, it came full circle to me. So I was like, yeah, this is dope, you know, t- trying to tap into my inner Nas born. But, like, yeah. you know, it was definitely, definitely fire. I ain't going to lie, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. TikTok. Yeah, I agree with Solomon. TikTok. Yeah, yeah, I like it. You know, mm-hmm. I like the music and the beat. I like that kind of beat. I don't know what the, how, what you call it, but, but you just, like, you could feel it. It makes you move when you don't even notice you're moving. 
I liked it a lot. It was catchy. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the What's the name of the artist? Who's the What's the, the name? artist name is Mathematical Jazz. Mm -hmm. Oh right, right. Yep. Shout out to Mathematical Jazz. Good name. Yeah. yeah what's Sayy Priest? <laughs> From Pennsylvania. I like that. Sayy. Oh, it it was um it was it was it was um. I'm gonna say if I could put this in words. It was, I like the rhyme. The the beat you was looking for is is like a basic boom bap, mm. boom bap. You oh, know what okay. I mean? That's that's that's, that's mm -hmm. how I, I was thinking about what you was thinking about at the same time. I was trying to put that together in my mind. And yeah, boom bap, and um, the rhyme was dope. It was, I mean, it's a song. That's what that's what you that's what we create, right? It's a song. I love mm -hmm. it. Beautiful. Thank uh, thanks and keep it coming, man. That was dope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Noise. All right, I believe it is time for our grand finale. Okay, let's go. Y'all already know. That's right. Straight out of Puerto Rico. <laughs> From Puerto Rico. Yo. Puerto Rico. <laughs> Love it. Let's go. All right. Here we go. Here's the setup. Uh oh. I like. You know what I like? The. the boom. Yeah, oh, yeah, the beginning. Oh, I part. like that too. Yeah, it just, I don't know, it just stuff for my frequency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tap into the it's frequency. It's doing the mindset. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny as hell. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So, this is Kazodiak with Heaven's Journal. Mm. I'm choking silence to the scream. Dip you eat too much meat. You let violence in your dreams. This is science to these things. Harp storms created. Who is guiding all the strings? My eyes on everything. I get big wealth as father. Illuminati tear drops. Knowledge is my armor. Even smarter than my karma. Fire up the barbecue. I know this life's been hard on you. But look at what this artist drew. Heaven's journal. Exit circle. Jumping over seven hurdles. Seven in the crescent fertile. Essence of a pregnant turtle. Breath of herbal rest eternal. Life Except is just a death turtle. rehearsal. This world's a rumor when you die the elementary birth you rare as can be Don't you know you borrow when the very air that you breathe Are you ready uh, for the blade of the sword I unsheathe? Prophet and the soldier, knowledge on my shoulders Apple from the poetry, Marsha and Rozier Your body is a loner, rented for your entrance Angels marching my corona The maker on the mound, build a ship and mold a crown Glitter, starry eye, heart to die, lift the spell of cloud Killer, beautify your inner space Move it while I demonstrate how I set the demon straight Cut another piece of fate, love is always being hate Jazz in the rain drops, music in the breeze, roots breaking in the grass, this kind of beauty never leaves. The stones rock and roll, I write this in my soul, heaven show, angel feathers on pens, the net is squeeze. Feel the pads in my brain stop, tunes in the trees, sound wave mountains, the tides of all of me. The stones rock and roll, I write this in my soul, heaven show, no something better than me, you never be. Oh my goodness. 
How'd you like that? Should I do it? Oh, that was fire. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Oh, you get that, that's what you gonna say? Um, nah. First <laughs> the moment, I, first the moment I heard the beat, I knew I was gonna like it. Um, you know, like I keep saying, it's Kai. But um, you know, it it's, it was both it was both things I liked. The video obviously always corresponds, and yeah, once I first heard the beat, I knew he was gonna snap on it. So I was like, yo, it's dope. So that's the Kai Zodiac. Oh. oh, oh, is it me? I want to yeah, say, yeah, I wanna yeah. go. the music, it did come full circle for me. That was so moving. Something about that music, especially the voices at the end. Yeah. Um, his lyrics, of course, are always on point. Very, very deep. Very, very, uh, a, a very deep message. We can always hear like his genius in his lyrics. I love the song, the way the music went with his message this time, and the graphics were out of outstanding. The mute, the the visual was so beautiful. I absolutely loved it. So shout out to Cap. I'm I'm sorry. I said Cap Jones. Sorry. <laughs> shout out to Zodiac. I'm thinking of, they're both uh, royal priesthood, so that's why I said that. Shout out to Zodiac. That's all love. Yeah, Dude. and uh, just so y'all know, the links to all of those songs are going to be in the description, um, except for the ones that were MP3s. Obviously, those are exclusives. Mm -hmm. And if y'all are interested in submitting tracks for the next episode, go to killerpriest.tv slash song promo. Links in the description. I just want to say this real quick. Yeah. Yo, Michael, that's one of my friends. Yeah, I want him to start submitting. That's, that's one of my guys right there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to shout that out real quick. Shout out to Michael. Yeah. yeah man. Uh, shout out to Kenyatta Black, who's here. You know what I mean? Word. Shout out to the God. Um, I want to say beautiful poetry putting together. Now, everybody know Kai, Kai is just, he's lyrical. He's lyrical. But it's, don't you know that you're the air that you breathe? It's the science that he dropped in there. You know what I'm saying? It's the jewels that, the little bit of beautiful just poetry with it's like you drink the orange juice but he put the pulps in it you know what i'm saying you could feel mm -hmm. the, the 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 it's the beauty of it it's like explaining the raindrops and it's all beauty man so that's all i wanted to say about that i'm just happy i'm just happy you're on the team yo mm -hmm. love it loving it or something special uh and with that Young Pharaoh, if you're still watching, my brother, um, you were phenomenal, man. Um, it's always great to hear um, brothers with, with your, your, um, your knowledge. And, you know, you got to respect brothers who grow, even grow more, grow more, grow, and keep, continue to grow. I love that. Growth is essential. Don't be stagnant and stay in one place. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to, that's the whole thing about planting seed the, the trees teach us that you go underground at first but then after a while it takes time water and the right sunlight and then the, 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 the seed gotta crack over and the flower gotta I mean before it bud it have to come through as a stem it don't look like a flower yet like some type of alien or something but then uh, oh, it starts to open up and then you notice that it's not just one flower that looks like that it's a bunch of them the lotus flower is crazy because it, it does that on water. This is like crazy. Pads, mm -hmm. lily pads, and then next thing you know, it's holding up frogs doing the myths. But you are more than what you think you are or what the, you were taught you are. Believe in yourself. That, um, that super energy that you have, the fire that you have, that's what you are. Just like we talked about in the beginning. Um, the water evaporate. We are water. We are fire. We are space dust. We are this. This is what we are. And so believing in oneself, there's nothing wrong with that. Just continue doing it. And pour back into the resources, which is you. You saw, you, you, you keep that cycle going. And then you have your, your spinning wheel. You know, they say, my wheels are turning now. So return back to source. Return back into uh, yourself and keep pushing yourself and striving for the best. Somebody said lotus feet, but you know, lotus flower. You are the light. That's what we spoke about tonight. And I just want to say, um, forest of the happy ever after, 5 1. 
5 1 23. It's 5 1 23. 6 23. Yeah. Um, thank you, Pharaoh, for coming through. Always great for Nepal Shada to come through. And um, I'm I'm glad I like the interaction y'all were having. Really dope. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, I know you've been doing this for a very long time. Getting on the mic and um and just debating. You got your debate things coming up too. Oh, Shout out to yeah, you. we're doing we thank you for reminding me, priest. Yeah. We will be doing our show, our new show this Saturday, yeah. basic instruction before leaving earth. The topic will be blood sacrifice in the Bible. Is it is it right? Is it necessary? Um Oh, it's necessary. And- no, it's- <laughs> According to uh, the brother that was on today, it's very much necessary. I, but uh, anyway, yeah, shout out to young Pharaoh. I, I'm all, but listen, let me stop before people grab a sound bite. But yes, we will be doing basic instruction before leaving Earth show with our Bible discussion this Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We dual stream because Priest and AD and Coach Solomon are so gracious to let me dual stream this channel and my channel. So please go over and subscribe to Nepasha. Don't win, win, please, please. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, uh, and we will be doing some debates. We have a debate with Black Jesus Minister coming up. Maybe he'll join this Saturday, as well as Judah Natsara of Torah Nights and many others. So hit me up in my email, lubbylu at gmail.com. It's L U B B Y. L-U-U at gmail.com. So if you think you got what it takes to um, get in the ring and crack some piñatas open uh, in a debate, that is, please contact us. All right. So thank you. That's to be piñata. <laughs> I always wanted to yeah. hit one of them damn piñatas when I was little. You never hit a piñata before? No, nah, I always wanted to. Just bust those things open. Wow. Oh, we about to do it for his birthday this year then. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I never, never bust a piñata open. <clears throat> yeah, we'll yeah. get you one. I hope, oh, I hope, it, I hope it's yeah, filled with get you one. chocolate. What do you want it to look oh, like? I know where to get it, too. I want John Kelly chocolate in there. Nothing but chocolate. I'm <laughs> giving <poor. laughs> I am addicted yeah. to chocolate. You have chocolate and juguetes y confite. Hey. How do you say? All of the fun stuff. How do you say it? Uh, divertidos? No, that's not it. How do you say fun? I forgot. Um, yeah, R- rico? Oh, oh, I actually, my, my my buddy's right here. He speaks fluent Spanish. Yeah. Divertido. What did he say? Is it divertido? It's fun, fun, right? Yeah, you were right. Yeah. Di- yeah, she was right. Divertido. Yeah, was right. Uh, it's if, because I never have fun. I forgot how to say it. Well, if, if you want to really speak fun in Spanish, this is what my boy is. Dan said he goes, you say it like this. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> No, he did that. He did that. That's like, okay, that's a that's a dad joke. Yeah. Fine. It's like when you're saying no and you're going no. Right. Yeah. No, no in Spanish is no. no. Yeah. No. No, yeah. no. 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 Yeah. Yeah. No. No. It was a South Park. I should know. Latinas tell me that all the time. No. No. Yeah. no this is better than no. <laughs> then ask your friend. De ninguna manera. Heard that? He says, "Yeah, like without a matter." There's no way. There's no way. Uh, we just say no way, Jose. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Just say nah. <laughs> nah. My Spanish is really basic. <laughs> yeah, it's California. You gotta yeah. know Spanish. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know to say the right things, you know, but <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not saying fluent sentences. I, I had a, I had a Dominican girlfriend back in the day. She speaks Spanish. Mm. I understand That's nothing she said. Choice. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. It was back in the day though. I was like, I was young, <laughs> but yeah, what yeah. Teach you how to say. Um, damn. That's, that's that's a good point. <laughs> you, can, you can practice at Mexican restaurants just by reading the menu. You know, I the guacamole, I, I used to I used to just say the the I used to just play around with her. To be honest, like I just really just would say things and be like, hola. And I'll just be like that. It's the start. It's the it's the easiest things. I can't I can't. I barely got English down. I got to get English down first, and then I got to get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I'm still trying to study French too, because that's a. Oh that's, yeah, because you got the Haitian roots. That's yeah, right. Creole. 
Shout yeah. out to your mom and the Haitian roots. I have Haitian, I have some Haitian in me um, as far as my family from the island of Hispaniola. Mm -hmm. I have a grandmother. She's a Haitian Dominican. Okay. Okay. Yeah, see? I mean, you know, Dominicans and Haitians, you know, the same island. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one thing we like to say, Dominicans say this a lot. And a lot I don't know if your 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 mom ever said this to you, AD. I don't know if it's a, like Latina say it, moms, but they say, Ya te dije. Like and I told you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like, Go ahead. I, I, like I told you already. Yeah, I That's told what you I told so. You? <laughs> yeah. I say, uh, Ya tu sabes. Ya tu sabes. Ya like, te dije. Porque you you already know. I know a lot. Yeah. Nunca quiere, your friend can say, nunca quieres. I have to say, mm -hmm. see, Dominicans have lazy Spanish. <laughs> it's like, but I will say it in proper, proper Spanish. Nunca quieres escuchar. But that's not how you'll hear Dominicans say it, though. Mm. I, I agree. He said Dominican food is fire. You never, mm -hmm. you will, you never want to listen. Never, yeah. Never want to give you up. up. <laughs> Never want to let you down. Yeah. <laughs> well, to hurt you. He had a big ass head. When I was little, that I got, who was sung that again? Rick Roll. I said, get Rick Roll. Never want to lift you up. Hey, he TikTok brought that back, though. You That's popular. popular. Him and um, oh, no, bro. What's that? who they got? Uh, the white dude is singing. Oh, bro, 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 bro. <laughs> what was his what? name? Yeah, he saw with um, he saw with Patty LaBelle. Oh my! Oh, that's Michael. Yeah. He's from, he's from Clear, Creedence Clearwater. Oh my own. I did it in this way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, What's Mike, his name? Now you messed me up. I Michael gotta think. McDonald. Michael McDonald. Yeah. DJ from Guam yeah. in the yeah. house. Guam. Yeah. DJ yeah, from Guam okay. knew that one. Chris yeah. Him, him and uh. This wasn't yeah. how it was supposed to be. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway, y'all. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. When I came home last night. <laughs> oh, that's my you know, favorite. I did, that. I did my remix to, to that. Yeah, exactly. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me. That was the real direct singer right there. Hmm. Do you know that song hit just like uh, MJ and... Uh, who else? I had, you know the the songs that keep. But you can play. Give it to me, baby. Anywhere. Yeah. Give me that Doobie stuff. Brothers. My uh, bad. WS Banker. Yeah, yeah. Give it to me, baby. It was Doobie Brothers. My bad, guys. Yeah. I mix those two up all the time. Hey. I we're doing what we did at the end of the last podcast. We're jumping on all these uh, songs and these artists. These eighty songs. Eighty yeah. songs are coming back. Um, social media. They're bringing back TikTok. They're bringing it back. Used to be like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that, I would have loved to meet Rick. Yeah, yeah, Buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs> very strange. Very strange. You could probably sample that, right? It's strange. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. Hammer. What, what hammers? Hammers sample one of them, right? Uh, he did. Uh, yeah, he did. Um, big one, right? Oh God. Can't touch this. Do 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 do. There you go. Yeah. Do 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 do. Dun, dun. Don't touch this. He, yeah, a, well, it was a very freaky girl. Super yeah. freaky. Yeah, the yeah. kind you don't take home to mama. See, it was real. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was real. That was some straight, like, that was it. It's a, funk. George Clinton Ryan? said funk is the DNA of hip hop. Oh, yeah, George Clinton. Mm. I opened for him in Parliament. But James Brown mm. said. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. James Brown said. James Brown? Static. Mm. He said static. You know what? You know we talking about Rakim, right? Rakim said James Brown must have been dusted. Yo, they had a little because he was like, he's like all these guys. It was a it, it was a song James Brown made. Shout out to the great legend James Brown. I think it was called I'm Real when he was like everybody sampling his records, and it was like I'm real, and he was saying everybody was taking his records back in the eighty, and then he he, he put out Static. No, mm. I think Full yeah, Force. Yeah. I don't know why I know this, but I think Full Force. Oh, uh, I mean, all the musicians, you know, guys who know uh, guys and ga gals, guys and guys, you used to call them gals, mm -hmm. take straight shots out of dirty glasses. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Look out, look out, Mojito looking at me. Right, hey, right. You lying. You know, <laughs> nah, I'm not going to lie. He grilling. Yo, but you can't like, see. He could grease grilling right now. Tell that right story, now. <laughs> nah, no, I, He's grilling. Yo, could you, I wish I could see Mojito right now. He's like I'm ready sorry. for you to go. He's like, yo. 
On my own. <laughs> All right, I'm about to go. All right, so listen. AZ King says salute to Big Worm with the glasses. Uh-oh. Big Worm. Oh. oh, Big Worm. You call me Big Worm? Is that me? Yeah. I, don't, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know. Let me start this. Um. What about, uh, can I, may I make a comment? Like, where's I, all the mods, I spent the things with the bait. I've been in the fuck with the bait. I didn't see any mods today, honey. Huh? I just no went mods the bay. My, fa- no, my favorite part is when I'm in the bay. My man Brooke, I've been, I spent the brunt with the bay. I've been wow. in the the day. So that's my joint. Mm. Two dollars on a creek? What he said? I, I sent a B yeah, on a date. He came back to me late. I've been the straight other to the straight. Shout out to the Bay Area. Mm. Hella, I'm having a hell of a good time. Hella. Hella good time. Shout out to my man, Just Jay. Looking on, man. We having fun today. This is a little bit of after hours, but we about to be out of here because yeah. we have to get out. Thank you once again, um, Young Farrell, for coming through. Thank you to the lovely uh, Nepal Shadar. Thank, thank you, man. AD. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Coach Solomon. Uh, Solo Gems. All right. Oh, can I just say this real quick yeah, before we go? I know we keep doing this, but yeah. uh, let me just say this real quick, yo. <clears throat> listen, we didn't really do the wisdom of Solomon today, but it's all oh, good. Damn. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, listen, yeah. Young Pharaoh came on here and speak this wisdom, so that's all he needed to do for me, yeah. and I and I appreciate the brother doing that. So you know, he definitely told, he's definitely dropped some gems, and, I, and, and you gotta listen to what he's saying. Stop thinking with whatever whatever controversy is going on. You know what I mean? Don't don't don't. Listen to the whole thing because you know you don't have the full story. You gotta get the full story before you start judging somebody. That's the real truth. But um, and also you know, just follow me on Instagram. I'm doing these lives now. I'm thinking I'm starting these little projects now, so I'm gonna do a little live. You know, I'm just gonna just talk about anything. It's not no wisdom. You know, I could talk about some wisdom, but yeah, I see you dropping shit on your Instagram. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. I just did that. You know, That's just cool. just an experiment. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna be up on the roof and like you know just talking. To the chat, you could join it. You know what I mean. You could be there. You know what I mean. I will probably talk about whatever. You know what I mean. Relationships, girls, sports, whatever. You know what I mean, just it's like the wisdom of Solomon, but like a little extended. You know what I mean, so awesome. after I was, oh. after I was with Solomon, yeah, after time, I, I was I was gonna call it like solo sessions. Oh, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. I like that. Solo, 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 yeah. solo sessions. Yeah. Fire. Oh man. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's fire mm-hmm. right there. That's fire. Yeah. Uh, that's fire. Solo, yep. session. Solo sessions. All right. So what time? Right. Every uh, morning? Just yo. It don't even matter. It could be at nighttime or in the, uh, or in the morning. I'm just gonna just. It's just gonna happen. It's just gonna happen. Right. I'm just gonna announce it probably, and I'm gonna just be like, all right, I'm going on. You know what I mean? So. So if they're subscribed, if I'll they follow you on the, on the Instagram, they'll know when you go live. Yeah. Like, if they follow live. me, I'm I'm typically gonna just probably post it. Y'all gonna y'all gonna know. Mm-hmm. Normally. Normally, I'm going to try to hit the mornings and nights, like, because, you know, before the times I go out or before the times I'm, like, busy and doing things. So that's pretty much the, the times I'm going to go. Not really in the afternoon, but. Awesome. I'll let y'all know. I'm there. I'm going to come through. I'm going to come through. Mm-hmm. But after y'all, I'm going to want to ask some questions. Yep, yep. I need, I need some help. Yeah, my, and my, uh, my Instagram is in the descriptions. Hey. That cash. All right. Oh yeah, the cash app. Yeah, if you want to hit my ask cash app, ask any questions or any advice. You know, I know you. I got. Yeah, you might be all older than me, but you know, you might have some sons that are going through something, and you probably trying to understand them a little bit more. Maybe I can give you some advice, or maybe you know whatever you're trying to go through or whatever. You know, I'm I'm a very intelligent yeah. man. So. Oh, you're very intelligent and very mm-hmm. wise for your age. Yeah, thank you. Thank there are you so people much. who are twice your age and they don't uh, have the wisdom. So I'm mm-hmm. telling you, it's omen nomen. You live, you become what your name is. So yeah. shout out to Solomon, Coach thank Solomon. You, thank you. Coach. Open your mind. All right. <laughs> All right. Somebody said I got a notebook. Yeah, I got a notebook. Oh, man. This is a book. I'm selling them on eBay. Yeah. Dang. It's a fan. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, no pun intended. <laughs> Right. All right. <laughs> is that your only fan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are so much worse, Smiths, up here, man. So much worse, Smiths. Yeah, y'all be doing it, man. Damn. How y'all be coming up with these cliches, man? Look, why is the dome? There's mm-hmm. too much cliches yep. keep coming. We about to get out. We about to get up out of here, man. Um, love, peace, font, leave hair grease. 
to say. What else wrong with, with uh, love, peace, father, leave hair grease? What else rhymes with that? Peace to the darkest minds of the light. That Dark is the rhyme of that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Longo. Really kingdom of Longo. Peace. Mm-hmm. Chongo. Peace. See y'all next time. Peace. Chongo. <laughs> Young Pharaoh. I hope you saw this one. Yeah, right, right. They said I appeared in the astral suit. He never had no use. Supreme gene variation in haplo group. Strong and natural as my afro roots. Or twist by queen, the same color as apple juice. Lord God, Lord Son, the first Pharaoh Zeus. Past many sand dunes. Sing carols to my powerful parables. Egyptian tan moon, cobra desert. The oldest letters, homo erectus. I rise like the Tower of Babel. Unfinished steps go around, no windows. While in Tibet, the sky turned yellow, then green and gold like lentils. While over Rome, the sky was various shades of wine. Egypt, all the falcons circled the sky. The temperature went up like the ears of a jackal. The priest said, surely this is a sign. Close your eyes and vision my rhymes. For they recall me, they press and rewind. Purely, I'm line for line. In my glory, like the sun I shine. Carving my story in the stones of time. There's no door key to a home free mind. Man was made on the sixth day. By mixing the bar and thick clay. The hand met the key in the almond ray. Concentrate and animate Six neutrons, six protons, six electrons Inside of a hexagon My lexicon, no weapons formed Against a rapid Decepticon I move like I'm inside the movie Inception with calm In the depth of this song Hope your perception is on Six on the periodic table is carbon That's the garden the atoms, evolution, the hurricanes I'm able, causing floods and reoccurring rain The archangels will blame But to this day, the oldest structures of triangles remain Holding your brain, please don't go insane It can get deep when I speak, I refrain Meaning there's certain codes I sustain I know what it contains So the poet just entertains So Michael, saw so Prince, so Kirk Cobain My glitter socks in my heart-shaped box My tears drop like purple rain On top of my penny loafers I'm trying to reach nirvana through yoga Is there any hope for our culture? They don't really care about us. Signs of the time. Teen smell like spirits that's henny and soda. Is anybody there? Can anybody hear? Am I clear? Sitting in my chair. Suddenly I'm in Times Square. Then a prehistoric New York. I'm talking waterfalls, gigantic eggs. A pterodactyl rose up behind me and flew off. I'm seeing smoky canyons where Queens was. I'm talking flatlands, green hills, Bronx, Manhattan, and Brooklyn with mountains, monkeys, and streams of mud. Suddenly I'm sitting in front of volcanoes in between floods. The time was rare, fresh. Share. Turn to my left, think I can see China from here. Millennium from now, when they ask who is the greatest poets. From the cradle to the oldest, just wait a moment. Debate the omens, fight to bring up my name in your brain. For some, it took the days of COVID for them to take notice. Every dope rhyme I say, you play on components. I slayed opponents that keep rising but disappear like waves in the ocean.